Kedua ini mana punya? Mulai pasti lagi. Ikan buka lagi. Ah.
Rector of Institut Seni Indonesia Yogyakarta, along with the Vice Rectors, distinguished representatives of the partner universities, My Fahluang University Thailand, University of Bristol United Kingdom, Tainan National University of the Arts Taiwan, DBFA Academy Work and Health Germany, respectable faculty and offices, high officials and respectable invited guests, dear participants, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I, Henning Tias Widowati, your Master of Ceremony, would like to welcome you all to the fourth ICPA, International Conference on Performing Arts. Until this afternoon, in two keynote presentation sessions, and parallel session, we will roughly discuss this year conference theme strengthening musical potential as a humanism reconstruction model. To begin our agenda will be aired the national anthem of the Republic of Indonesia, Indonesia Raya.
General Ch Chairman Welcome Address delivered by Dr. Samuel Gandang Gunanto, SCOM MT. Distinguished guys, respected speaker, invited presenter, and participant on the annual symposium of Art, Technology, and Humanities 2021. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good morning. It is an honor for the University of Indonesia Yogyakarta to organize the annual symposium of Art, Technology, and Humanities 2021 with two conferences held this year. This year, we are proud to hold ECPA International Conference on Performing Arts and Creative Arts, International Conference on Intermedia Arts and Creative Technology 2021. We would like to share our deepest appreciation to welcome all respected keynote speaker from various country and participants of the symposium in this special occasion. We are very grateful and these two conferences can be held this year. Even though it should be held virtually, but we are able to contribute to these two conferences and to share best practice and knowledge with others. This event is indeed being indispensable for scholar, professional, and academician to meet and exchange ideas on their multidisciplinary interests related to arts, technology, and humanities, and particularly to discuss the current global challenge during the COVID pandemic. Holding up two conferences in this symposium, ICPA and Creative Arts is aimed at facilitating the science forum with prevention a valuable response and commitment to expand new scientific principle, policy, and application in this pandemic issue. The topic broke by this two conference are means of conveying to the global academic sector in which arts is emerged as an expression of millennial era artists by utilizing the existence of technology and the presence of a digital world that could present the actualization of works, rise the process of art creation in the digital domain. Technology, humanity, arts, and music become the media of contact since they are full of creative potential and social solidarity and cohesion it's become the source of information and insight in relation to social issues in a digital world, as well as their discussion. Ladies and gentlemen, in responding to the discussion of the issue, we are privileged to have among us experts from several universities of our overseas partner. Hungarian University of Fine Art, Hungary, Academy of Fine Art, Vienna, Austria, Tasmania University, Australia, University of Bristol, United Kingdom, Tainan National University of the Arts, Taiwan, DPFA Academic World and Health, Germany, and Mai Fa Huang University, Thailand. In addition, there are also official local partners for this symposium, such as Universitas Sanata Dharma, Universitas Islam Indonesia, Universitas Kristen Duta Wacana, EDS Lab, and Mustafa Bragama University, which have already been contributing to the success this academic forum. On behalf of the Committee of Annual Symposium of Arts, Technology, and Humanities 2021, we would like to express to our gratitude to all keynote speaker, Professor M. Dwi Marianto, PhD, Professor Dr. Iswan Eros, Dr. Svenja J. Karts, 
Dr. Stephanie Wusit, Profesor Dr. Johan, Profesor Mikhail Ellison, Profesor Made Mantelhut, Profesor Markus Tuek, and Profesor Pakarawat Siti Prapaporn. All respected participants from various university and institution in Indonesia and several countries. Outstanding reviewer of both conference and all parties who have demonstrated the commitment to make the symposium successful. Last but not least, I would like to send a very good appreciation for Rector of Institute Seni Indonesia Yogyakarta, Vice Rector of For Academic Affair, and the entire academic members of EC Yogyakarta who have given us the opportunity and support to hold this symposium with two international conferences, which shortly will be taken place for two days. Ladies and gentlemen, we strongly expect it this academic forum will fruitfully produce important outcomes to develop strategic way and real solution in facing up the current global challenge in this pandemic situation through the outstanding academic response. We wish you all fruitful and productive discussion. Thank you very much. Rector of EC Yogyakarta welcome address. Kindly be invited, Professor Dr. Muhammad Agus Burhan, M. Hum. Excellencies, distinguished guests, speaker and participant of ICPA and Creative Art 2021, ladies and gentlemen, I'm really privileged to have the pleasant text of welcoming this distinguished gathering. It is my honor to have all of you in this academic forum that is indeed an indispensable activity for all art scholars. Indonesian Institute of the Art, Yogyakarta, or ISI Yogyakarta, would like to extend deepest appreciation to welcome all participants of ICPA or International Conference of Performing Art and Creative Art or International Conference on Intermediate Art and Creative Technology 2021. As ISI Yogyakarta has hosted the previous seminar this year, we are honored to present the annual symposium of Art, Technology, and Humanities 2021. Even though it should be held virtually, but are very grateful that these two conferences can be held. Ladies and gentlemen, we all experience an unprecedented situation with the global COVID-19 pandemic and cause new life changing. The influence massively happened in our daily life. It's urgent and adoption in all life sector, including in the art, technology, and humanities. The topic brought by this Two conferences are means of conveying of the global academic sector that art is emerged as an expression of millennial era artists by utilizing the existence of technology and the presence of digital work by corporations, the actualizations of works, rises the process of art creations in the digital domain. The development of the art creations and the realizations of intermedia art enrich the definitions of art that manifests itself in the digital world and gradually increases the impact on humanities. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Institute Seni Indonesia Yogyakarta, I would like to express our sincere gratitude to all keynote speaker of these two conferences. Professor N.G. Marianto PhD, Professor Dr. Iswan Eros, Dr. Svenja J. Kratz, Dr. Stephanie Hutsis, Professor Dr. Johan, Professor Michael Ellison, Professor Madi Madelhut, Professor Markus Stuex, 
Profesor Pakar Wat Siti Praparon and Alkohos University Islam Indonesia, University Sanata Dharma, University Kristen Duta Wacana, University Mustafa Beragama, IDS Lab, Hungarian University of Fine Art Hungary, Academy of Fine Art Vienna, Austria, Tasmania University, Australia, University of Bristol, United Kingdom, Tainan National University of the Art Taiwan, GTFA Academic World of Health, Germany, Maifah Luang University, Thailand. Staff and faculty members of ISI Yogyakarta and the committee to have actively contributed the knowledge, skill, and commitment to this program. Hopefully, the outcomes of this program will be beneficial for all parties and strengthen the mutual relationship year to come. Finally, I sincerely hope you will enjoy today and the next two days of discussing, sharing, and networking. Thank you for your participation. Ladies and gentlemen, we come to our first keynote presentation session that will be organized by Dr. Raharja, Master Music, as a moderator. If I have to read his uh, curriculum video, it will take a half day, so let me just say this. Uh, he has been devoted his life as a lecturer in Karawitan Study Program of ISI Yogyakarta, researcher, musician, and also composer. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dr. Rahadja, Master Music. Thank you very much for the time. Uh, thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, all participants of this event. First of all, I would like to greet you all. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to this academic forum of the fourth international conference on performing art or the ICPA in the year of 2021. Two years ago, we were able to meet face to face and get to know each other. Because of the pandemic situation in this year, the ICPA conference should be held in virtual mode. Let us pray that this pandemic situation can be end very soon and turn into a very um, really good uh, atmosphere so that we can meet again, exchange our ideas, knowledge, expertise, and also experiences. Second, let me introduce, my name is Rahatyo, and I will be the moderator of this uh, virtual conference. This event will be divided into two sessions. The first half, there is a uh, presentation that will be delivered by two keynote speakers. And the second half is a discussion or questioning. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, let me introduce the name of each keynote speaker. 
we live in the atmosphere on the day. First, Professor Johan from the Indonesia Institute of the Arts. His position now as a professor at music performance department and graduate school at the Indonesia Institute of the Arts at Jakarta. Visiting professor at master program of psychology at the University Kristen uh, Satyavacana, Salatiga, Central Java. Research interest, uh, cognitive ethnomusicology, neuromusicology, performance studies, art management, link and restoring uh, tourism. And he is part of the Neuropsychology Research Laboratory and Dynamic of Basic Education Foundation. The second is Professor Pakarawat Siti Prabakorn from Thailand. The academic position now is an assistant professor at the School of Anti-Aging and Regenerative Medicine at Mai Fah Luang University, Bangkok, Thailand. He got his doctoral degree of philosophy from Mahito University, Thailand. Professional skill is neurosciences and brain, brain imaging. Based on his CV, he has a lot of academic, non-academic and experiences in his career. Unfortunately, uh, because of the limited time, I cannot read them for you now. So as not to waste our time, let's start the virtual conference today by giving the, uh, the opportunity to the first speaker, that is Professor Johan, who will present his paper with a topic of the discussion entitled Music Education in Post-Truth and Global Trend. 2040. Please kindly proceed to the presentation. Professor Johan, are we ready yet? Yes, thank you, Professor Harjo. Okay, okay, so your time is 30 minutes and the floor is yours. Thank you. Okay, good morning, everyone. Good morning. It's honor for me to join in this symposium. First of all, I would like to thank you to the organizer that invited me to join in this very prestigious academic forum. And secondly, I would like to apologize that I will deliver my speech this morning in Indonesian language. Okay, I will share my screen. So the title of my presentation this morning is a music education in post truth and global trend in 2040 is a part of my personal review about our music education recently. Dewasa ini dunia globalisasi dan kemajuan pesat di teknologi akan terus menerus mengubah ruang budaya dan dunia kerja terutama karena sistem pendidikan meningkatkan kecepatan yang sepertinya terputus dari realita ekonomi dan masyarakat global. Dalam konteks ini, terutama kesempatan kerja dan polarisasi, semua sistem pendidikan, apakah itu dari sekolah dasar, sekolah menengah, dan perguruan tinggi, memiliki peran penting dalam mempersiapkan warga dunia dan tenaga ahli di masa depan. Model pendidikan harus beradaptasi mau tidak mau untuk membekali para siswa, mahasiswa dengan keterampilan untuk menciptakan dunia yang lebih inklusif, lebih kohesif, dan produktif. Model pembelajaran tetap muka yang selama ini digunakan dalam pendidikan sebagai arus utama, saat ini sebagian besar dipengaruhi oleh kebutuhan revolusi industri pertama dan revolusi industri yang kedua. Karena produksi massal model seragam ini kemudian 
yaitu yang tatap muka itu digunakan untuk mengisi pekerjaan manufaktur di awal-awal abad revolusi dan berulang-ulang membuat kurang fokus pada proses. Sementara sebagian besar sistem pendidikan berjalan seperti biasa. Dan inovasi telah mendorong perekonomian menuju model produktivitas yang baru. Transisi dari semua sistem pendidikan ke sistem yang dirancang untuk revolusi industri keempat, atau yang kita kenal dengan pendidikan 4.0, 4.0, memiliki potensi luar biasa untuk mempersiapkan peserta didik dengan lebih baik. Tidak hanya untuk masa depan persoalan pekerjaan, tetapi juga untuk menghidupkan kembali mobilitas sosial, meningkatkan produktivitas, dan mempromosikan kohesi sosial secara lebih dinamis. Secara umum, salah satu kendala utama adalah kualitas pembelajaran yang dimulai sejak masa kanak-kanak berdampak signifikan terhadap tingkat pendidikan dan kehidupan selanjutnya. Memang definisi kualitas telah banyak diperdebatkan dengan tambahan ketidakpastian yang disebabkan oleh kemajuan teknologi yang sedemikian pesatnya. Karena semakin banyak teknologi yang pesat dan hadir sebagai solusi potensial, mau tidak mau membentuk kesenjangan kehidupan global. Meskipun penggunaan teknologi sebenarnya bukan tujuan, melainkan lebih berfungsi sebagai alat untuk memungkinkan lahirnya solusi atau pendekatan-pendekatan yang baru. Ada juga beberapa produk teknologi yang dapat memenuhi potensi seseorang tanpa memerlukan konfigurasi ulang substansi pembelajaran yang mendasar. Namun, jika tidak ada konsensus antara visi normatif pendidikan dalam ekonomi dan masyarakat baru, maka inovasi yang mendasar mengenai konten dan model pembelajaran akan tetap semakin terbatas. Perkembangan yang terjadi saat ini adalah anak-anak sejak dini sudah mulai dipersiapkan untuk menjadi kontributor produktif bagi perekonomian masa depan dan menjadi warga negara yang bertanggung jawab dan aktif dalam bergaul dengan masyarakat masa depan atau internasional. Untuk mewujudkan visi tersebut, mereka perlu dibekali dengan keahlian utama, yaitu peradaban global yang inovatif dan kreatif. Tentu saja yang tidak bisa dilepaskan adalah kompetensi teknologi dan keterampilan interpersonal. Untuk itu, hal penting dalam menjawab kebutuhan yang paling mendesak adalah sistem pendidikan juga harus menerapkan, menerapkan mekanisme yang cerdas dalam mengadaptasi semua potensi agar tetap berorientasi pada masa depan. Beberapa aspek yang dimasukkan untuk mengubah isi pembelajaran terutama untuk membangun dan meningkatkan keterampilan tingkat dasar seperti membaca, berhitung, dan menulis yang selama ini telah dilakukan. Kemudian pada pendidikan tinggi, di tingkat sarjana dan pasca sarjana adalah kemampuan memahami wacana melalui kegiatan menelaah, kegiatan diskusi, dan penjelasan tertulis sebagai bagian dari mengasah berpikir kritis dan menghasilkan pengetahuan. Selain itu juga, memuat konten dengan fokus membangun kesadaran tentang dunia yang berkelanjutan agar dapat berperan aktif dalam komunitas global. Kompetensi ini perlu dimasukkan ke dalam lingkungan belajar melalui mekanisme formal maupun informal. Sedangkan konten yang secara khusus ditujukan untuk masyarakat global yang dimasukkan untuk selalu mengintegrasikan keterampilan tersebut ke dalam kurikulum. Selanjutnya perlu juga dimasukkan proyek-proyek sains dan teknologi agar kesadaran global dapat dipupuk dengan mengeksplorasi momen-momen dalam sejarah melalui perspektif bagi orang di seluruh dunia. Karena pendidikan masyarakat global juga dapat berlangsung di luar kelas melalui kegiatan seperti berpartisipasi dalam aktivitas-aktivitas sukarela, pengabdian masyarakat, atau kampanye lingkungan misalnya. Banyak sekolah menggunakan protes perubahan iklim global misalnya sebagai contoh, sebagai momen penting untuk mengajari anak-anak tentang pentingnya keterlibatan masyarakat. Sehingga 
Kurikulum yang terintegrasi itu merupakan hal yang tidak bisa lagi ditawar-tawar. Teknologi komunikasi baru yang saat ini sedang berlangsung memungkinkan pendidikan untuk lebih memahami masyarakat global, baik melalui ruang kelas, apakah itu virtual, atau konferensi video seperti yang saat ini kita lakukan, yang dapat menghubungkan mereka dari ruang kelas ke berbagai belahan dunia. Hal ini memungkinkan para peserta didik untuk bertukar ide dan belajar tentang tantangan global melalui perspektif yang berbeda. Peta online dan interaktif dapat membantu kaum muda belajar di mana mereka berada secara virtual atau bahkan augmented reality yang membawa mereka ke lingkungan yang baru dan memungkinkan mereka untuk terhubung dengan tantangan di berbagai belahan dunia. Media sosial juga memainkan peran kunci dalam membantu kaum muda untuk mengatur diri mereka sendiri pada isu-isu global. Interaksi semacam ini dapat memiliki efek yang kuat pada pemahaman kaum muda tentang dunia di luar lingkungan mereka dan dapat membantu membangun empati untuk mendukung dunia yang lebih inklusif lagi. Kreativitas dan teknologi Kebutuhan untuk memasukkan konten yang menumbuhkan keterampilan berani berinovasi, termasuk pemecahan masalah yang kompleks, pemikiran analitis, kreativitas, dan berpikir kritis, tidak dapat lagi ditawar-tawar untuk saat ini. Karena semuanya dibutuhkan oleh pasar tenaga kerja di tahun-tahun mendatang. Proses ide dan literasi dalam inovasi juga membutuhkan sikap dan gaya belajar yang lebih aktif, bukan lagi pasif. Sejak usia dini, anak harus diajak terlibat aktif dengan materi pembelajaran melalui analisis kritis dan pertanyaan-pertanyaan mendasar tentang norma dan sistem yang ada. Pembelajaran yang menyenangkan dapat mengaktifkan keterampilan inovasi, terutama kegiatan bermain terstruktur maupun yang tidak terstruktur, sehingga memungkinkan mereka mengembangkan rasa ingin tahu alami. Belajar melalui trial and error, dan mengeksplorasi solusi baru untuk menghadapi berbagai tantangan. Pendekatan non-literasi non ini, misalnya, belajar sambil bermain telah diadopsi dan diterapkan dalam pendidikan formal maupun informal di beberapa negara maju, dan bahkan menjadi dasar pendidikan anak sejak usia dini. Kolaborasi dengan orang-orang dari berbagai latar belakang juga sangat membantu dalam mengembangkan keterampilan kreatif sehingga penyelenggara pendidikan perlu mulai mempertimbangkan keragaman berbagai faktor. Apakah itu gender, atau jenis kelamin, ras, suku, kemampuan, orientasi seksual, bahkan bahasa. Nah, Salah satu aspek yang kini menjadi media yang tidak bisa dihindarkan adalah konten berbasis pengembangan keterampilan digital, termasuk pemrograman, digitalisasi, dan pemanfaatan teknologi. Merancang dan memperprogram adalah dua keterampilan utama yang sangat diminati di tahun-tahun mendatang karena intervensi teknologi terus berdampak pada pertumbuhan di semua bidang. Sementara itu, sumber daya manusia yang terampil menjadi kontributor utama melalui kemampuan mengadopsi teknologi. Perekonomian saat ini akan semakin tertinggal dengan meningkatnya permintaan keterampilan digital sebagai bentuk pemanfaatan potensi revolusi industri keempat yang akan mengakibatkan dunia usaha dan perekonomian terus mendorong penguasaan teknologi bagi tenaga kerja di masa depan dalam berbagai rancangan atau desainnya. Pada saat yang sama, banyak penelitian menunjukkan bahwa kerangka kebijakan publik tidak semuanya berjalan atau sejalan dengan tingkat inovasi di sebagian besar ekonomi dunia. Oleh karena itu penting bahwa selain keterampilan perangkat keras dan pengembangan teknologi, generasi muda juga perlu memahami prinsip-prinsip tanggung jawab digital. Kombinasi keterampilan ini akan membantu mereka membentuk kebijakan dan praktik di masa depan, menjadikan teknologi sebagai pendorong pertumbuhan yang positif. Misalnya saja di Inggris, 99 persen guru setuju bahwa keterampilan teknologi ini merupakan bagian wajib dari kurikulum. Pergeseran konten pembelajaran seperti itu akan membantu anak-anak mengembangkan hubungan yang sehat dengan teknologi, memahami prinsip-prinsip untuk mengelola risiko dan keamanan digital. 
Selain itu juga untuk membangun kesadaran tentang tugas mereka sebagai pengembang dan konsumen teknologi yang bertanggung jawab. Metode pengajaran yang memanfaatkan pemikiran komputasi, menggabungkan matematika, sains, dan literasi digital untuk membantu siswa memahami cara mendekati masalah seperti yang dilakukan oleh komputer, itu dapat mendukung integrasi keterampilan teknologi ke dalam kurikulum sekolah. Misalnya saja, setelah belajar tentang pemanasan global atau global warming yang sekarang sedang menjadi isu, siswa dapat menggunakan alat seperti Raspberry Pi atau Scratch untuk merancang situs web advokasi guna meningkatkan kesadaran tentang tantangan tersebut. Jadi teknologi pendidikan juga dapat mengembangkan keterampilan ini dan menawarkan sumber daya untuk pengajaran pemrograman sehingga membantu siswa mengembangkan keterampilan dalam menggunakan teknologi digital dengan berimajinasi membuat cerita interaktif yang unik misalnya melalui animasi, melalui permainan, melalui musik dan bahkan seni-seni lainnya. Untuk memasukkan konten yang berfokus pada kecerdasan emosional, interpersonal, seperti empati, kerjasama, negosiasi, kepemimpinan, dan kesadaran sosial. Sehingga keterampilan ini perlu dibiasakan karena dapat membantu anak-anak atau generasi muda sejak dini mengembangkan hubungan yang sehat dengan orang lain dan mempertimbangkan pandangan yang berbeda untuk melengkapi dan menambah kompetensi lain di masa depan. Misalnya seorang anak yang mungkin mempertimbangkan perspektif tentang penyandang disabilitas atau seseorang dengan identitas gender non-biner, tetapi mungkin memiliki keterampilan produksi yang inovatif, sehingga dapat digunakan pendekatan dan layanan baru yang lebih inklusif untuk semua segmen masyarakat. Demikian pula seorang anak yang telah mengasah keterampilan komunikasi dan kepemimpinan dapat lebih mudah membujuk orang lain untuk mengaktifkan masyarakat global mereka dan melaksanakan isu-isu ekonomi dan sosial. Di dunia yang semakin berjejaring ini, dengan networking, keterampilan ini menjadi semakin penting, terutama untuk membentuk pemimpin masa depan yang memperjuangkan ekonomi inklusif. Hasil penelitian menunjukkan juga bahwa mengembangkan keterampilan non-kognitif pada usia dini dapat memiliki dampak positif yang bertahan lama pada individu dalam jangka panjang, di luar pekerjaan, di luar upah yang lebih tinggi, di luar kesehatan yang lebih baik, dan bahkan kemungkinan yang lebih rendah untuk terlibat dalam kejahatan. Oleh karena itu, metode pengajaran yang menekankan kesadaran akan keragaman budaya adalah satu-satu cara untuk mencapai keterampilan ini. Pendekatan tersebut dapat diajarkan baik secara formal maupun informal melalui kursus, atau melalui workshop yang ditargetkan pada perkembangan sosial dan emosional, atau juga diintegrasikan ke dalam kurikulum yang ada. Dari sistem pembelajaran standar ke sistem yang didasarkan pada berbagai kebutuhan individu, maka setiap pelajar akan cukup fleksibel untuk memungkinkan mereka maju dengan kecepatan mereka sendiri. Karena di dalam dunia kerja yang nyata, masalah keterampilan, akan menuntut organisasi untuk jauh lebih gesit dalam memberikan pengalaman kerja dan pembelajaran yang disesuaikan dengan kebutuhan individu para pekerjanya. Ada juga pekerjaan-pekerjaan yang disediakan oleh staf sumber daya manusia sektor swasta dengan menyesuaikan pengalaman kerja untuk memungkinkan pembelajaran sepanjang hayat dengan mengintegrasikan model kerja alternatif untuk meningkatkan fleksibilitas. Meskipun anak-anak akan masuk ke dunia kerja dan memiliki pengalaman yang lebih baik dari sebelumnya, hal itulah yang membuat sebagian besar sistem pendidikan terus mengambil pendekatan baru dalam proses belajar mengajar. Pergeseran ke model yang lebih personal dan fleksibel tidak hanya dapat membantu sekolah untuk mencerminkan realitas pekerjaan dan kehidupan di luar sekolah, tetapi juga terbukti menghasilkan siswa yang lebih potensial Salah satu studi menunjukkan bahwa penerapan model pembelajaran yang dipersonalisasi, termasuk merancang perjalanan belajar individu, kemajuan berdasarkan penguasaan keterampilan dan lingkungan belajar yang fleksibel, memiliki signifikansi positif bagi kemampuan matematika dan membaca siswa. Dari sistem pembelajaran terbatas yang standar selama ini bagi yang mereka memiliki akses ke gedung sekolah, 
akan berbeda dengan sistem di masa depan di mana setiap orang memiliki akses ke pembelajaran yang lebih inklusif. Setiap orang menyadari bahwa pendidikan dapat menjadi penggerak utama mobilitas dan kesejahteraan sosial. Sehingga sistem atau model pembelajaran harus beralih ke metode yang lebih mudah diakses guna menjamin terbukanya peluang bagi semua orang dan golongan. Tanpa transformasi seperti itu, tren saat ini berisiko memperburuk ketidaksetaraan. Selain itu juga meningkatkan aksesibilitas dalam pembelajaran saat ini merupakan jalur untuk membentuk kumpulan bakat yang beragam di masa depan. Dalam ekonomi yang semakin didorong oleh inovasi, beragam talenta akan memiliki implikasi positif bagi perkembangan dan pertumbuhan di masa depan. Berbagai modalitas untuk belajar, termasuk metode visual, auditel, taktil, dan kinestetik, dapat diintegrasikan ke dalam kurikulum untuk membantu siswa terlibat dengan bahan ajar dengan cara yang berbeda. Instrumen yang ditujukan untuk siswa berkebutuhan khusus misalnya, seperti aksesori pemberat dan stimulan taktil, dapat digunakan untuk menciptakan lingkungan belajar yang cocok untuk semua orang. Memastikan keterwakilan yang beragam dalam materi pembelajaran seperti pengenalan sejarah perjuangan karakter melalui buku dan sebagainya juga dapat membuat pembelajaran menjadi lebih mudah diakses oleh anak-anak dari berbagai lapisan masyarakat. Baik itu mulai dari distribusi materi berbasis proses sampai ke proyek berbasis kasus yang membutuhkan kolaborasi dan bahkan lebih mencerminkan ruang kegiatan di masa depan. Masalah dengan pendekatan ini adalah bahwa ekonomi yang digerakkan oleh inovasi sekarang sangat bergantung pada penciptaan ide, layanan, produk, dan solusi yang sama sekali baru, dan tidak ada proses atau formula instan untuk mengatasinya. Kreativitas dan inovasi tidak dapat ditiru karena membutuhkan individu yang selalu berusaha mencari solusi dan mengulang-ulang berdasarkan beberapa seberapa baik mereka mengatasi tantangan. Dalam banyak kasus, mungkin ada beberapa solusi dan desain pemecahan masalah yang inovatif, tetapi sangat terjarang terjadi melalui pemikiran yang terisolasi, sehingga sejak usia dini, anak-anak perlu belajar bekerja sama untuk menemukan baik itu fisik, digital, atau hibrida untuk menghadapi sebuah solusi. Untuk membutuhkan pemikiran semacam ini, sistem pendidikan perlu berubah, dari pendidikan, dari pendekatan berbasis proses ke pendekatan berbasis masalah. Banyak studi menunjukkan bahwa metode ini dapat meningkatkan keterampilan pemecahan masalah, serta persepsi positif dari lingkungan belajar. Hal ini memungkinkan anak-anak merasa memiliki pembelajaran dan menciptakan rasa kebersamaan yang lebih kuat pada lingkungannya. Sistem pembelajaran dan keterampilan akan menurun sepanjang hidup seseorang yang membuatnya beralih ke sistem di mana setiap orang akan terus menerus meningkatkan kapasitasnya untuk memperoleh keterampilan baru berdasarkan kebutuhan masing-masing. Menumbuhkan pola pikir ini akan membutuhkan agen siswa untuk menjadi faktor kunci di sekolah. Para ahli terkemuka telah lama mengajarkan pendekatan yang berpusat pada siswa, menyoroti bahwa anak-anak secara alami cenderung memiliki rasa ingin tahu yang besar, dan pilihan mereka akan membantu mengaktifkan rasa ingin tahu alami itu. Pilihan dapat diintegrasikan ke dalam pendekatan pembelajaran berbasis proyek dengan memberikan beberapa pilihan objek yang memungkinkan mereka untuk memilih strategi mereka sendiri, sampai mereka tiba pada tahap menghasilkan solusi. Menciptakan kecintaan besar belajar sepanjang hayat juga membutuhkan peralihan sistem pembelajaran yang berpihak pada pendidikan dan bukan untuk penghargaan khusus atau hanya lulus dari tes standar atau yang sekarang menjadi komodifikasi, yaitu pencarian ijazah. Sementara penilaian menjadi penting untuk memastikan kualitas dan akuntabilitas hasil, bentuk yang lebih progresif, termasuk memasukkan pilihan siswa sebagai cara efektif untuk menghindari bias, dan kemudian memerintah mereka untuk menerapkan prosedur abstrak yang baru saja ditemukan. Pendekatan berbasis kasus, misalnya. Misalnya kita meminta siswa untuk merancang wadah yang dapat menampung 25 mainan dengan ukuran tertentu. Dan bagaimana melindungi mainan dari kerusakan air ketika akan digunakan pada saat musim hujan. Contohnya seperti itu. 
Anak-anak dapat melakukan penelitian tentang bahan tahan air. Mengambil pendekatan yang berbeda untuk memperkirakan ukuran kontainer. Apa yang seharusnya dan setiap wadah mungkin terlihat berbeda, tetapi tidak diperhatikan saat membantu mengucapkan masalah yang sama. Dengan menghadirkan tantangan secara terbuka, anak dapat memanfaatkan kreativitas dan inovasi tanpa tekanan untuk sampai pada jawaban yang tidak hanya jawaban tunggal. Meskipun bukan persyaratan mutlak, tetapi teknologi pasti dapat memfasilitasi pendekatan pembelajaran kolaboratif berbasis kasus. Misalnya alat berbasis cloud dapat memungkinkan siswa untuk mengerjakan dokumen yang sama dari lokasi yang berbeda dan membangun hubungan kolaboratif satu sama lain. Virtual dan augmented reality dapat menambah tantangan pada pemecahan masalah dengan membawa siswa ke geografi yang baru, membuat mereka menemukan solusi di luar konteks yang mereka kenal. Berbagai macam sektor, baik swasta maupun pemerintah, dapat memberikan peran kunci dalam mendorong jenis pemecahan masalah yang tepat untuk membantu transisi anak-anak ke masa depan. Microsoft misalnya telah bermitra dengan banyak program ekstrakurikuler di negara-negara maju untuk memakali siswa sekolah menengah mereka dengan tantangan nyata yang dihadapi perusahaan. Dalam salah satu proyek, Microsoft meminta siswa untuk mengevaluasi sekolah artificial intelligence, sekolah kecerdasan buatan, dan memberikan umpan balik tentang arah strateginya. Menurut perkiraan pada tahun 2002 saja, ya, tahun depan ini, rata-rata orang akan membutuhkan tambahan 100 hari, 100 hari belajar untuk mengikuti dunia kerja yang berubah dengan cepat. Sementara sistem pendidikan tradisional telah dirancang untuk mengurangi pembelajaran saat mereka menjadi usang, sistem baru harus muncul, di mana orang terlibat dengan pembelajaran seumur hidup untuk menavigasi tantangan pekerjaan di kemudian hari. Penanaman pola pikir ini akan menuntut siswa sebagai agen menjadi faktor kunci. Para ahli terkemuka telah lama menghasilkan pendekatan yang berpusat pada siswa, menyoroti bahwa anak-anak secara alami memiliki rasa ingin tahu yang luar biasa, dan pilihan siswa membantu mengaktifkan keingintahuan alami tersebut. Pilihan dapat diintegrasikan ke dalam pendekatan pembelajaran berbasis proyek dengan memberikan siswa beberapa pilihan untuk proyek dan memungkinkan mereka memilih strategi mana atau strategi mereka sendiri untuk mencapai sebuah solusi. Demi pembelajaran, bukan untuk penghargaan. Meskipun ini adalah format yang mungkin saat ini masih berbeda, Semuanya dapat memberikan kepada guru dan keluarga wawasan mendalam tentang pemahaman anak mengenai materi sambil memberikan kemandirian anak tanpa kehilangan hak untuk memilih. Mengaktifkan metode pengajaran berbasis penelitian yang terbuka juga dapat mendukung pembelajaran sepanjang hayat. Pedagogi adalah kombinasi pendekatan pengajaran dan prinsip-prinsip pembelajaran yang menopang sistem pendidikan. Sementara banyak pendekatan yang berbeda, ada literatur telah menyarankan lima pendekatan, lima pendekatan kunci untuk mendorong inovasi dalam sistem pembelajaran. Yang satu adalah bermain atau playful, suatu pendekatan untuk menciptakan pengalaman menyenangkan yang memungkinkan siswa menemukan makna dalam belajar melalui pemikiran aktif dan interaksi sosial. Ini termasuk misalnya permainan game, baik itu gratis maupun dengan panduan atau game-game yang terkait dengan bidang-bidang seni atau musik. Yang kedua itulah eksperensial, pendekatan yang mengintegrasikan konten ke dalam aplikasi dunia nyata. Pendekatan ini mencakup pembelajaran berbasis proyek dan pembelajaran berbasis inquiry, yaitu penyelidikan. Kemudian yang ketiga eh, adalah komputasi, suatu pendekatan untuk mendukung pemecahan masalah yang memungkinkan siswa memahami bagaimana komputer ikut memecahkan masalah. Kemudian embodied, pendekatan yang menghubungkan tubuh ke dalam pembelajaran memulai berbagai aktivitas fisik. Dan yang terakhir, multiliterasi. Pendekatan yang berfokus pada keragaman dan cara bahasa digunakan dan dibagikan dalam menghubungkan pembelajaran dengan kesadaran akan budaya. Sekarang saya akan lebih fokus kepada pendidikan musik. 
pedagogi musik di kelas pada akhirnya tentang mengajar anak-anak untuk hidup berkolaborasi atau bekerja sama melalui kegiatan kolektif seperti misalnya ensemble sehingga bukan hanya bagaimana belajar menguasai alat musik atau bagaimana belajar menguasai musik meskipun kadang-kadang secara realita kita melihat bahwa keberhasilan pertunjukan atau konser sangat tergantung pada keterampilan tetapi Hubungan sosial yang positif yang melibatkan praktek empati, disiplin, dan tanggung jawab pribadi dan sosial itu juga merupakan salah satu hal penting dalam keberhasilan sebuah pertunjukan. Proses pendidikan musik gagal ketika guru dan siswa memperlakukan musik sebagai hal yang abstrak dan mekanis sosial dengan penguasaan teknis belaka. Tanda-tanda musik dan figur berirama yang terlalu mudah ditiru oleh mesin untuk menciptakan apa yang disebut Dewi sebagai pengalaman, bergerak secara emosional untuk dapat meningkatkan kesadaran, yaitu pada kontribusi manusia dalam membentuk budaya dan kesadaran. Sejauh ini kebanyakan guru musik masih punya beberapa pilihan. Terus mengajar menggunakan cara sebelumnya, atau fokus secara eksklusif pada kinerja, tetapi meninggalkan kekesalangan sosial, budaya, dan politik. Seperti yang selama ini telah dilakukan, model pendekatan tradisional dan pendidikan musik yang didasarkan pada argumen seni untuk seni, misalnya art for art, sebetulnya sudah sejak lama salah satu propaganda dari The Frontiers of Art and Propaganda telah lama mengatakan bahwa pengajaran dan pembelajaran musik seperti itu menjadi terlalu sempit. Membuat pembelajar lebih rentan terhadap efek musik dan bahkan merusak berkontribusi pada hak mereka atas kebebasan. Namun, kata hasil seolah-olah menyiratkan tujuan pendidikan yang telah ditentukan sebelumnya, sehingga kebal terhadap kritik dan interpretasi atau reinterpretasi, menginterpretasi ulang. Seperti halnya istilah pengukuran yang justru menjadi dualistik, seperti pada mata pelajaran STEM, dengan seni dijauh dari objektivitas ilmiah saja, meskipun siswa diharapkan untuk menunjukkan pemikiran kritis dalam kaitan dengan isu-isu kepentingan publik, secara sepintas mungkin tampak menyiratkan konsep demokrasi dan masyarakat itu sendiri. Tetapi sekali lagi, tidak memiliki definisi, definisi yang tepat, karena dalam istilah ekonomi biasanya disamarkan sebagai partisipasi mereka sendiri. Kadang-kadang bahasa demokrasi lebih rentan terhadap pilihan ketika datang ke proyek-proyek besar sehingga menjadi semakin tidak jelas bagaimana memobilisasi kesuksesan secara luas untuk dunia yang semakin global dan beragam. Oleh karena itu, musisi, seniman, atau guru musik juga memiliki kewajiban moral dan etika untuk merenungkan bagaimana produk dan profesi mereka sendiri memiliki kekuatan besar dan abadi dalam kehidupan masyarakat melalui pembentukan kepercayaan politik dan kepercayaan lainnya yang sampai saat ini tidak semua disadari. Musik dan seni-seni lainnya sepanjang sejarah manusia telah menjadi sumber inspirasi politik atau sumber inspirasi kebudayaan di dalam masyarakat. Nah, mereka juga sebagian digunakan sebagai alat manipulasi dan tirani Musisi dan guru musik terkadang juga terlibat dalam represi, baik secara langsung melalui pertunjukan atau pengajaran atau secara tidak langsung melalui politik pendekatan, penolakan atas kontribusi mereka sendiri, atau industri musik yang sering disebut kurang memiliki keadilan. Salah satu penemuan kepentingan komersial diciptakan pada tahun 1987 oleh ahli musik Inggris dengan mengemas dan menjual rekaman komersial musik populer dari seluruh dunia atau yang disebut dengan musik dunia. Sebenarnya erat kaitannya dengan kapitalisme, termasuk fetisisasi komoditas, manipulasi yang disengaja, ketidaksetaraan, dan hegemoni budaya serta apropriasi. Di dalam artikel The Neoliberal Arts tahun 2015, menuduh neoliberalisme menurunkan minat pada seni, humaniora, dan ilmu fisika, misalnya kimia, geologi, astronomi, antropologi, karena lebih banyak yang memilih jalur karir yang dianggap paling menguntungkan secara komersil, yaitu ekonomi, biologi, teknik, dan ilmu komputer. 
penggabungan nilai-nilai neoliberal dengan uang telah mengubah pemahaman baik siswa maupun orang tua tentang apa artinya belajar. Yang bukan lagi tentang keingin tahuan intelektual dan penentuan nasib sendiri atau tentang menjalani hidup lebih sepenuhnya di sini sekarang. Tetapi menampakkan tempat lain. Padahal menurutnya dalam budaya kelembagaan, terutama di perguruan tinggi saat ini, bukan kemanusiaan yang berorientasi. Jadi pada perguruan tinggi saat ini menurut hasil penelitian mereka, bukan lagi kemanusiaan yang menjadi orientasi, melainkan belajar untuk kepentingan dirinya sendiri. Rasa ingin tahu untuk kepentingan diri sendiri. Gagasan untuk kepentingan diri sendiri. Dan ini akan semakin menggerogoti misi pendidikan. Mendidik masyarakat dalam arti lebih luas. Politik global sejak resesi, resesi besar pada tahun 2008, datang seperti bagai, badai sebagian besar pemilih tidak puas dengan neoliberalisme dan ketidakstabilan ekonomi dan militer juga yang telah dialami di banyak bagian dunia akhir-akhir ini. Kondisi ini memberi kesempatan bagi guru seni dan humaniora untuk merasa lebih aman, tetapi belum tentu aman dengan sekolah maupun perguruan tinggi mereka. Namun jika mereka ingin mencapai tujuan itu, perlu untuk memperjuangkan publik. Dan dalam hal ini pendidik musik juga memperbesar visi pendidikan mereka sendiri. Yang penting, tidak hanya untuk kebutuhan ekonomi, tetapi juga untuk kehidupan yang dijalani secara lebih baik. Lebih lanjut tentang teks sumber ini perlu dicatat juga bahwa munculnya kecerdasan buatan atau artificial intelligence dan perangkat digital canggih yang mungkin memiliki implikasi serupa untuk pendidikan musik, termasuk pendidikan guru, dan setidaknya pada pandangan pertama bahwa keterampilan musik dengan sedikit bimbingan guru lebih diperlukan untuk anak-anak memainkan atau menciptakan musik. Sejauh ini situasi pekerjaan musisi, artis, dan guru musik belum tentu menakutkan, meski menghadapi tantangan yang cukup berat. Memang hmm, banyak pekerjaan musik dan seni tidak jauh berbeda dari banyak pekerjaan-pekerjaan lain dalam hal pergeseran pekerjaan sebagai respon terhadap peristiwa ekonomi. Tingkat pergeseran pekerjaan dalam seni pertunjukan terus menurun dan kolaborasi seni pertunjukan tetap menjadi industri, industri utama yang lebih besar, baik dalam ukuran maupun jumlah pekerjaan, daripada industri lain yang dianggap penting. Seseorang harus melatih seniman-seniman ini untuk menguasai bidangnya di masa depan, meskipun misalnya pelatihan musik saja bukanlah alasan yang cukup untuk membenarkan pendidikan musik bagi anak-anak. Apalagi di era digitalisasi saat ini, kurangnya keahlian bukan lagi menjadi halangan bagi seseorang untuk bisa bermain atau berkreasi. Sehingga kita perlu mempertanyakan, perlukah pendidikan musik atau seni lainnya diajarkan di sekolah dan belajar melalui sekolah, kalau misalnya sampai saat ini tutorial melalui YouTube sudah sedemikian banyaknya. Wacana musik dunia dibungkus atau dikemas dalam bahasa hangat yang sangat menguntungkan, atau ada saling menguntungkan, mutual simbiosis, pertukaran yang bersahabat secara politik, eksplorasi suara, eksploitasi, bunyi-bunyian non-barat. Tetapi asimetri dan ketergantungan mendasar dalam pertukaran musik telah didefinisikan dengan sangat jelas. Industri musik global mempromosikan fantasi kesuksesan dan ketenaran bagi musisi melalui keuntungan distribusi yang disediakan oleh internet sehingga sebagian besar akan merasa sulit untuk memonetisasi musik mereka sendiri. Pada pergantian abad, musisi rock dan pop barat yang didominasi laki-laki mendominasi pasar musik global. Kalau menyebut masalah dominasi barat di pasar musik yang bias, biasanya langsung dikaitkan dengan Amerika. Untuk saat ini, alasan kuat untuk percaya bahwa globalisasi musik memperkuat hegemoni hierarki ras dan gender yang signifikan di banyak belahan dunia. Excuse me, Professor. Yeah. The remaining time is five minutes. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Di era post-truth ini dan lebih dari sebelumnya, sangat penting bagi demokrasi, demokrasi bahwa anak-anak dan orang dewasa sama-sama perlu belajar untuk membedakan kebenaran yang dapat dilihat dengan mata telanjang melalui propaganda politik dan perusahaan. Disinformasi dan omong kosong yang semakin didorong oleh politik populis reaksioner dan kekuatan pasar. 
Bahkan beberapa penelitian menunjukkan bahwa pendidikan musik atau seni lainnya tidak memberikan kontribusi terhadap pengembangan keterampilan yang dianggap penting bagi angkatan kerja yang lebih luas pada generasi muda, meskipun mereka masih membutuhkan tempat di sekolah. Karena sekolah dianggap bagian dari pengalaman manusia. Dan seni yang diartikulasikan dalam artikel ini harus dipahami terutama sebagai persiapan untuk kedewasaan dan masyarakat global yang demokratis, bukan hanya pelatihan pemain dan konsumen masa depan. Namun tidak berarti bahwa anak-anak harus dipacu untuk menjadi orang dewasa secara insan. Mereka memiliki hak untuk menikmati masa kanak-kanak dalam segala hal yang tersirat, termasuk kesempatan untuk memadai, untuk bermain, dan kreativitas pribadi. Keduanya penting untuk mengejar kehidupan yang baik dan seumur hidup. Kematangan dan masyarakat demokratis adalah tujuan yang harus dicapai secara bertahap dan dengan pematangan melalui pengalaman dengan melibatkan kombinasi yang menyenangkan. Mungkin kontribusi terbesar pada pendidikan musik adalah multikultural untuk pembangunan sosial dan peremajaan demokrasi liberal melalui sosialisasi anak-anak dan keyakinan dan nilai-nilai mereka melalui perluasan pengalaman musik dan sosial mereka. Dengan lebih banyak belajar tentang kelimpahan, kekayaan, dan kompleksitas musik, baik itu seni visual, tari, kuliner, arsitektur, atau sastra di seluruh dunia mereka. Anak-anak dan remaja kemungkinan akan lebih siap untuk mengenali dan melawan rasisme, xenofobia, dan kekerasan, kebencian terhadap populis atau pemimpin lain yang akan merusak demokrasi liberal dengan menumbuhkan budaya takut orang lain karena ketidaktahuan. Pendidikan liberal mempertaruhkan segalanya dan menurut siswa yang mampu mempertaruhkan segalanya ketika mereka mencari ide-ide mereka sendiri, disitulah pengalaman yang mereka peroleh. Ada kebutuhan mendesak untuk memperoleh sistem pendidikan dengan membekali anak-anak dengan keterampilan untuk menavigasi di masa depan dengan pekerjaan dan masyarakat di masa depan, memberikan visi bagaimana sistem sekolah dapat diperbarui untuk memenuhi kebutuhan masa depan anak-anak. Transformasi ini membutuhkan perubahan dalam konten pembelajaran untuk memasukkan teknis dan human center masyarakat yang inklusif. Untuk tahun 2040, Saran saya adalah kita harus meriset ulang, jadi nyetel ulang, nyetem ulang cara berpikir karena presentasi yang saya sampaikan tadi adalah bukan solusi, tetapi adalah masalah-masalah yang kita hadapi pada saat ini. Saya kira cukup sekian dan terima kasih. Waktu saya kembalikan. Uh, was the presentation delivered by The first uh, presenter, that is Professor Johan. Uh, the topic was very interesting, and we got lots of information from this presentation. Uh, there are lots of uh, problems that has been conveyed, and um, maybe we can find them around our own environment. Maybe uh, there are some uh, similarities or maybe very a contrasting situation is found. Uh, based on the paper that has been uh, submitted, maybe I can draw a short conclusion from my little notes, which is as follows. There is an urgent need to update the education system. This transformation requires a change in learning content. It requires greater alignment of actor in defining and assessing future skill, preparing the teachers to lead the transition and increasing connectivity across school and school system. And the last is the initiative aimed to mobile, uh, to mobilize key stakeholder in the transition to education 4.0, shaped to feature a new economy and society that impact a uh, billion of uh, people with increased educational opportunities and employment opportunity by 2040. Uh, on behalf of the organizing committee of the fourth international conference on performing arts, I would like to express uh, my deepest gratitude to Professor Johan. Thank you very much for the presentation of your paper. You're Thank welcome. you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, next 
we will walk through our second exposures. I will invite Professor Siti Prapaporn from Thailand, who will deliver a forecast topic that is no less interesting, of course. Yeah. Professor Siti Prapaporn, are we ready yet? Yes. Yeah, all right. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it seems that the second speaker is ready to present his paper. As for the title that will be delivered, is a Frontier in Performing Arts and Music Studies, a Scientific Investigation. Uh, professor, your time is 30 minutes. The floor is yours. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, and good morning, everybody. Uh, the chairmen of the conference and all the, the uh, staff of the organizing committee. So thank you again for inviting me to give um, lectures or as a keynote speaker in the international conference here, ICAP, uh, ICBA 2021. So I have, I think I have about 30 minutes to deliver all the contents, but I, I, I have about 88 slides, but I try to keep my slide and my talk in time. So let me chase my slide. Um, let's see. I hope everybody can see my slide, right? Okay, so um, what I want to deliver in this conference is the frontiers of the performing arts and music study. Um, by looking at the scientific investigations, I have been used to give the, these talk and these uh, um, lectures uh, several years ago. And then I try to uh, look at the, how advanced of the, the scientific way in investigating the brain mechanisms of music perceptions and performing our study. So I want to, I really want to, to, to present in this conference leaders. I, my name is Pakalawat Sitipa Papon. He's a director of the Neuropsychological Research Laboratory at the School of Anti-Aging and Regenerative Medicines at McFarland University. So my background have been educate, educated in cognitive neuroscience and neuroscience and doing a lot of research project in uh, South Korea in the University of Kansas Medical Center in the United States. And my professionals uh, background, uh, by means of the trainer and provider in no feedbacks, I have been certified so many, many tools that I develop it and use it for uh, uh, brain trainings and looking at the, the brain mechanism. So let's come back to my talk, all right? So in the past, we believe that, uh, even though even today, uh, in the past, we believe that music is just the airs of thinkings in the South. But even today, there are some of the people still thinking about it as a mere, Epic phenomenon, just a phenomenon, all right? But there are many, many people or scientists are looking at what's happened in the brains, how we appreciate with the music and performing us. So many artists are exploring neurological foundations of music perception. So no matter the, tech, the advance of the technologies or how backwards of the study is a technological is, but the music, is always an integrated part of ourselves or it, all right? So we can, we can see that in the past, we had the bone flute back about 43,000 years old. That's why we say that music is always as integrated parts of it, how, how, how advanced of the technology is. Since then, this neuroscientist have already learned from Niccolo Paganini, the best musicians that we already know. We found that the larger responses in auditory cortex of the Paganini brains. And we can found that the tonal frequency is located in the cochlea. Visual space plays on the latina and body surface, which is represented in cortical regions um, uh, functions in somatosensory left hand regions are ex or expand in, in, in Bacanini brains or by means of musicians' brain. All right. So that's the reasons why there are two forces have been driving 
in the scientific effort for neuroscientists to start with the music. First, we believe that music offers a unique opportunity to better understand the organization of, of our human brain. In the second, the studies of the brain organization will provide a unique tool. Only the human brain is the best unique tune to review the inner workings of the human of music processing. So neuroscientists will combine the efforts to this effort to give a better understanding of the neurological roots of one of the most characteristic traits in the humans that we call as the music. This is our humble brain, our nervous system. It's divided into peripheral lobes and central nervous system. Only brain and spinal cord is named as central nervous system that we really focus on. And this is our hound brain, human brain, the cerebral cortex here, cerebellum, and the brain stem. And each hemisphere, we have two hemispheres, and each hemisphere is also divided into four lobes: frontal, temporal, palatal, and occipital, and they are all functions in different ways. It depends on the, 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 the functions. So in terms of music and performing arts, the sensory inputs will come to our brain and do a processing, and then we we'll give a response to the, the perception that we call the sensory process and perceptions when we talk about the music and performing arts. So when the information is coming to the brain, there are four states, all right? The encoding, comparisons, and selection and executions. Apart from four states, we have the process of attention and memory. That's why musicians right, can remember so many details of musical components. And then we use the technology to investigate how, what happened in the brain. All right. So how does the brain code information when the musicians or the, the performing artists you know, perceive the information? There are two theories, the anatomical coding and temporal coding. All right, the anatomical coding that means that's the sensory organs. When you play the piano, when you play the saxophone, or blah, blah, blah. So the sensory organ will locate in different parts of the body and sends that signal to different locations of the brain. And then the brain will use that signal to interpret the signal correctly. All right, so that's why you can move your hand, your, your, your five uh, movement, you can, you can see, did you make it a good, uh, good recording part? And the temporal coding. This is the temp information can be coding according to time. So the easiest way is to do this to relate the respect to the rates of neural filing. All right, whenever, whenever, whenever there is a stimuli is coming, there is a it means the stimulation into, into your brain, and that there will be the rates of neural uh, filing all right, by means of the neuron in our brain. This is the, 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 the structure of, the, of, of our neuron in our brain, the cell body and then and to uh, and then and exon and exon terminal. So when that is the stimulation and neural filing rates, you know, the signal will come from the, the center uh, the, the blood cell body to along with the exon to the exon external terminal. All right. And the ion channel will open up and then the ion will be in front and left. All right. So it depends on the how the strong of the stimulation is when you play the sound. So it will stimulate it and then it will release the neurotransmitter. All right. So when you increase the intensity, the more neurotransmitter will increase, they will release. So when you increase the stimulation of the cells and make it longer, so your brain or neuron will release more neurotransmitters. That is why we appreciate with the music in no matter way. This is the mechanism in our brain. So how does the music inside the brain? Huh? So when we talk about the, how music get into our brain, we think about two components, the major component. The first is the source, and the second is the listener. And it is come along with the sound, all right? The first is the sound wave. The sound wave is the pressure cycle. We understand it's of the air molecule. Before it comes to our ear, the outer ear, the middle ear, and then the inner ear. At the inner ear, all right, we have the cochlea. In the cochlea, there are three chambers. In the cochlea, it's named as scala vestibuli, scala media, and scala tympani. In the cochlea, we have 
they travel wave or to south will travel inside the cochlea from the base to the apex. All right. So the high frequency, when there is a high frequency, come to, to our ear, the high frequencies will be perceived or located at the base of the cochlea, whereas the low frequencies will be located or perceived at the apex of the cochlea. All right, so this is our organ. In the cochlea, we have another organs we call as the organs of corti. In organ of corti, we have the hair cell, the two types of the hair cell, the inner hair cell and the outer hair cell. These, these are the hair cell in our ear. No matter the musicians or non musician eh? the inner ear, the line, the DNA shape configurations of the linear ear. This is the line here, just only one low. But why, whereas the outer ear, outer hair cells, we have about three lows in the V shape. All right. So in each hair cell, there is a string connected between the hair cell, we call it connected between still or cilia at the steel tilia tip. And when there is the sounds coming to our ear, pass to the outer ear, inner ear, uh, in the middle ear, and to inner ear. And then it will make the hair cells moving up and forth, forward and forth, backward and forward. All right? So the swing will make the eon channels open. When there is a good sound, and then when the sound of music that you appreciate in, for example, like you listen to Mozart, like you listen to uh, uh, um, the Gamelan uh, uh, music, and you, you get the appreciations of the music. It's caused a deeper polarization. And then it, your brain will release the neurotransmitter, will increase the filing. And when the Gamelan music stop, you could not, you not listen to any music. And then your immune emotion will change. It's caused the hyperpolarization. So it will decrease the filing and no more neurotransmitter. The functional polarizations of your hair cells, if we buy, it will be like this. So when there is a stimulation, all right, the neuron will be open and then it will be really neurotransmitter when you get the appreciations. So because you are all musicians, you will understand well how which types of music that you think it is good or not good when you want to apply to many other situations. So after that is the, the uh, signal or new low node transduction in the cochlea, it will send the signals up to the brain to the temporal lobe, which is the auditory cortex function it, all right? So into the brain, when it's up to the brain, it will go up, 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 up until to the Brodmann alien number 41 and 42 that we call in terms of neuroanatomy. Uh, neuro so it doesn't matter for all of you to understand it, but you can understand that the cell from the cochlea and to the brain. All right. So the frontiers of our study here is how we have so many instruments we call as neuro imaging way or neuro imaging study allow researchers to identify the brain area, which is associated with different parts of the music perception and cognitions. And then because of the technology, it's allowed the investigations to potentially overlap the new law circuitries associated with music and other domains, such as speech and language, you know, um, this are always the components of the human or higher brain functions of the brain. Since 19, since, since since 19th century. The access was the best technologies that are available to look at the of the human brain. But after uh, 19th century, several techniques have been developed and refined since that time to monitor the neural activities of the brain, or including the music's perception. Let me introduce two, and let me introduce all of you three main techniques that we normally use in neural imaging or start investigating the brain response to the music. The first is hemodynamics or metabolic techniques. The second, the locally disturbed brain function techniques and the electrical magnetic techniques. And then at the end part, 
I will show you how they just study uh, R and then what technology we have at the moment and then in the futures, may follow university by means of neuropsychological research laboratory, we work closely with the Indonesia Institutes of the Art by means of Professor Johan. All right, we, we will study more and more, and then we will conduct so many projects about the how we count, how we can explore the brain functions of performing arts. All right, for the first, the measurements of the activation still in the musical language for methods to measure the hemo, hemodynamic variations. The first machine is the PET scan, the positron emission topography. The PET scan is still good, but it's very expensive. It's difficult for our country to get one, but we have one, also one or two machines, just one or two machines, you know, in Thailand. It is it costs about 80,000 million baht. It's really, really expensive. But this machine, that light, uh, that's I look, uh, that I show here, the PET scan is good in spatial resolution. That means that the PET scans can localize our brain when we listen to the music. We can see immediately but it's very poor in temporal resolutions. That means that this is not good for studying the time processor. Why I say this? Because whenever we hear the sound, the brain will perceive very quickly. The brain will change very quickly. When we change the note, don't lay me fast on line. When we change the note, the brain will change immediately whenever we change the note. So the passacans is not good material for us to study the brain mechanism of the brain. But it, it depends on how the protocol experimental paradigm we decide, all right? But this is not good for spatial resolution because the brain responds very quickly. The second is the functional magnetic resonance imaging or functional MRI. We have so many functional MRI in Thailand or Indonesia, in Malaysia, in Singapore, so in Philippines, in Brunei, Dalai Salaam. In Saudi Asia, we have functional MRI, but it's still cost expensive when we treat with the patients. Yes, of course, this is high spatial resolution, good for localizing the religion while we perceive the music, but it's still poor in temporal resolutions, but it's poor for investigating the times of processes when the musician listen to the sound, all right? When we're talking about the musicians or non musicians perceive, perceive the sound, we have the patients who have, who get the trouble in hearing the music because at the amnesia. Amnesia patients or a music patient is similar to a basic patient that's language disorder or, but for a music patients, we name as the music disorder. That means that the patient, when never patients listen to do the music or specific or typical types of music, the patient will get annoyed, will get not good emotions, will get a bad mood in middle. That we call a music, a music patients. We a music patients also exist that in our society, but we do not realize it. One of our students from from um, um, uh, from Italy is a Thai, uh, uh, Italian Hong Kong, you know, um, um, student here in School of Anti Aging. We are developed the tool to investigate a music patients in Thailand. So the project is now going on, but uh, I hope we get the good let uh, good list. Uh, I will show you later. But this is the hemodynamic method or metabolic studies of the music. It can show you here. This is a good uh, special solution. The second method is a turf, the turf brain function. We name as a cortical stimulation or transcranial magnetic stimulation, and we can see where the brains of the musician is. That's perceive the music. And the third one, which is very best. The good one is we call it as electroencephalography based on the recordings of the electrical brain activity, which is measured at the surface of the skull. It is good for studying a time of cognitive process. All right, a time resolution is excellent, but the special resolution is poor. And this is the picture show you how we develop it, the protocol is, and then why we monitor the brain function when listening to the brain. All right, the developed one is magnetic uh, 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 magnetoencephalography. This is the machines that I work when I work. Uh, um, uh, this is the machines that I use at the University of Kansas Medical Center in the United States. 
I use this, I use this machine, the MEG, to measure the magnetic fields of which is produced by electrical activity in the brain at United States, but there is no MEG in Thailand. Yes, I've got, I know that there's one MEG in Thailand, but it's not allowed for doing any research or experimental uh, paradigm at all, all right? So this is the pictures of the MEG that we can choose is how to change, you know, in our brain. So when we discriminate, you mean our discriminate between two sounds or the music uh, components, two music component sounds, and then we can get the area undercut, we call it mismatch negativity. And then the mismatch negativity or music perception or by means of studying the brain functions or mechanism for music perception or performing arts uh, of music, uh, we can give a, uh, develop many, many paradigms. For example, here, this is uh, uh, to compare between the second notes or the same note or not, or spatial tasks or visual control tasks. And this is the picture to show you how we can develop the protocol experimental paradigm while monitoring the brain functions. These are all the pictures that I work in in, in United States, in South Korea at the, the Seoul National University School of Medicine. I use the EEGs to monitor the brain in Collins people, in Collins subject. All right, and then I monitor the, what happened in the brain until I get the, the, the brain web and then I try to localize the brain and see where is it happened in the brain. So we come to, I think I have about 10 more minutes. So um, in terms of music, this picture show you how the technology can choose you the brain functions compared between a musician and musician, all right? And then there are some, some of the study can show you explore the brains uh, compared between a uh, well trained and less trained and naive. And by listening to different types of music, the first is London, a London movement, and familiar music, and then familiar music until the who are close to conditions and uh, who are close to condition. And then we found that the naive shows less activations compared to well-trained music. And this picture show you how it happened. The naive, naive you know, who doesn't uh, know about music at all and less activation in the brains compared to the professional or well-trained, all right? So until now, we under already know that the auditory and motor interaction during music perform, uh, uh, performance, all right? The motor system, we control the five movement and then auditory circuitry, we control by auditory cortex so that you can play the good music, all right? So the, the, the musicians, we does not, does not consider music as a monolithic, but also recognize so many musical components. I will talk in detail if I have a chance, but let me go quickly. So when we play piano, there are so many skills that we learn, you know, by singing, by voicing, you know, many skills. And then the study can show you the compare between uh, notations uh, and then the number leaks, all right, and shows you different brain activations. This is the true. This is a scientific explore investigation, all right. That's all musicians have to understand and know at the fundamental. So why what happened when we are musicians already. We, when we become a musician, uh, is no way to, to go back to be non-musician because you are already uh, become a musical expertise. What, what ha happened in the brain? So this is the non-musician and musician's brain. It shows differently. You cannot go back to non-musician anymore because you are become a musician, right? And then you can discriminate between two sounds, the two musics, all right? Uh, compare with non-musician. This is the capacities of your brain. All right, and then compare between if you are trumpeters or violinists, your, your brain will respond to different sounds. The trumpeter will respond to trumpet sounds better than the violinist. All right, whereas the violinist will perceive the violin sounds better than the trumpet sound. And then different from the left hemisphere and right hemisphere. We can exploit. And then we compare, we study about in adults, and then some, the adults can make uh, musicians, uh, non musicians can make a more more um, um, older than non musician, all right? This is the brain web. And then how about in, in children? In children, in children, so the younger persons began music training, the greater amounts of the brain activity less respond to musical tone, all right? This is show you how the, there are so many, many components which is related to the children when the, the children perceive the sound. It depends on the perspective that you want to focus on, a skill, a key, tonality, or meter, or even the, the, the temporal regularities or multisensory interaction. That's all integrated why they shouldn't listen to the sound, but we can 
at least apply the technology to see what happened when the student will develop the brain mechanisms of music perception. And then we can focus on different kind of response that I say, the EAG, the electrical activity can monitor different time response. It depends on what we want to focus on. So this picture show you before and after. All right, after learning the music, you see that the brain changes. Huh? And then in dyslexia and the patients before learning music, you see, and then after music, yeah, it changes. It's come to the, the, the difference between control and dyslexia before, before learning and then after learning the brain wave or the brains develop almost normal compared to the, the non-patients, all right? So as I say, the brain web detections, we use the, the, the technology. I will show you how the technology is, and then we can use that technology with non-expressive, with inexpressive machines in your institute, and then you can use that to study the music and performing a study. This is the device that I have at the moment in my laboratory, neuropsychological research laboratory. All right, this is we call as the, the EHOCO in team. This costs about 4 million Thai baht. It's quite expensive one. But you see that how technology is, you can carry on no matter the situation you want to study. You can study while you play a pianist. You can study while you're on stage and play piano. You can study. In, and this is also applied with sport medicine. This is, this is just packs on your back. And then it's, you can bring along. And this is all the device that I use in my laboratory at School of Anti-Aging so by means of Neuropsychological Research Laboratory. We have so many devices that I want to show you. These are all the 14 channel EEG, that device that I already gave to Professor Johans, and then we will develop it this next year, all right, the new ELAS of the frontiers of performing our study. And we have so many don't go. That's well, all student in, in the Indonesia Institute of the Art can borrow me and can, can send you, and then your student can develop the project together. All right, we call it as a brain computer interface, and then we can see what's happened in the brain and we can study it. All right, finally, now oh, is, is it 10 30? Okay, 10 30, I keep on time. I want to include it here several reasons for choosing what, what technique or what instrument that we're gonna use in our laboratory. First, the cost. We cannot use functional MRI, we can use the PET scan, even we can use the MEG, magnetoencephalogram because it's cost very expensive than EEG, all right? EEG means electrical activity that I show you. Safety, for students, MEG is better than functional MRI, PET scan. But research focus, if you want to see the brain localization, of course, the functional MI and PET scans are better than EEG or MEG, but at the moment, we can apply the EEG and reconstruct the EEG signal of brain electrical, electrical activity in our brain to make the localizations already. That's one of our study, you know, in Indonesia, Institutes of the Arts can apply the technique and see what brain lesions compare between the student or the musician who listen to gamelan music compared to piano music. And then we, we can explore the brain lesions, what happened, what brain lesions is in the gamelan musicians. All right? Professor, the remaining the time slide. is three minutes. Yes. Yeah, sorry, the remaining time is three minutes. Okay, yeah. yeah. Um, um, the, this is the last slide. <laughs> the time cost for brain response. The EMG and EEGs are preferable, prefer, uh, preferable for because uh, we can monitor the brain functions and as according to time, for head movement, the functional PET scan, you can move your head, but for the EEG, you can move your head. Technical expertise, these are the topics that's really important. I think starting from January 2022, I have, I draw many, many courses that I want to give online course or program with this all student in EC, uh, Indonesian Institute of Art to learn how to apply the, 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 the why to study the brain music. 
All right, to analyze, we have to develop the technical expertise there. All right, analyze data to set up the time and machines. That's all my slide. And thank you very much for uh, listening to my talk. And then that's all for my presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, that was the second presentation delivered by Professor Siti Prabhakorn from Thailand. The second topic is very, very interesting to follow and has many opportunities to be researched. Uh, we got lots of information, of course, but it is really over my head. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, uh, yeah um, I, I'm very curious to know more about this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, based on the paper that has been submitted, maybe I can draw a sharp conclusion from my little notes as follows. Uh, music or musical culture has become a, uh, an important part of human life, yep. not limited to the technological advance mm -hmm. they have, of course, yeah. Music is always an integral part of it. There are two forces. Uh, there are two forces have driven the scientific efforts. First, music offers a unique opportunity to better understand the organization of the human brain. Second, the study of brain organization provides a unique tool to reveal the inner working of music processing. The combined effort gives rise to a better understanding of the neurological roots of the one of the most characteristic traits of human, namely music. Yeah. So on behalf of the organizing committee, I would like to, uh, to thank you previously. Thank you. Thank you. As I mentioned at the beginning, that we are going to use the second half for discussion or questioning. For the first session, I will open for two questioners. You may raise up your hand. Uh, don't forget to mention your name and also position. Or you may also possible to write down the question on chat. Thank you. Are there any questions? Yeah. No questions. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, well, uh, while we are waiting for the questions, um, I will ask this to Professor Siti Prabhaporn. Yeah. Uh, professor, uh, I have questions like this. Uh, I have heard that the ability to play music. Uh, requires ear sensitivity, of course. Mm -hmm. I mean that one can hear the pitch A5, mm -hmm. yeah, A5 mm -hmm. at frequency of 440 mm -hmm. hertz. But someone else uh, mm -hmm. may uh, cannot hear it as a pitch A5 yeah. or, or yes. C or D or E, yeah. yeah. So every time he or she try to imitate the pitch, by using uh, their voice, mm -hmm. it can mm -hmm. be different. So yep. one, the problem is caused by the uh, the construction inside their ear. Mm -hmm. Also, the thickness of the uh, person's eardrum. Mm -hmm. uh, what is your opinion and also okay. your explanation? Thank you. Yeah, uh, thank you very much for the questions. As I say. This is the, the trace of the, the, the brains in our brain. So uh, what I, 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 can, I cannot answer in specific answer to your questions, but I will focus to, uh, to you, you what you have to concern about. Indonesians' brains will be different from other nationality brain because we was born with our cultural background or musical background. And we use our brain with two hemispheres, left hemisphere and right hemisphere. In Indonesian people, Indonesian brain, 
use so many, many traditional music. All right. So that means that Indonesian's brain will use more light hemisphere in perceiving music, better than other national. Compare with Singaporeans, compare with Malaysians, compare with Thai people, compare with uh, Filipino. Indonesians, I still trust and believe that Indonesian's brain will be absolutely identical and different from other national because all of you was born with the music. So this is the new era after COVID-19 pandemic. We need to use technology to explore what's happened and what the typical ties of the Indonesian's brain, I mean the musician of, the, of Indonesia people. And that is if you explore to Western people to, uh, to get amazing or so get appreciates or your, you know, appreciates with, oh, wow, how the Indonesian people can play a typical song or perform the typical arts, all right, to the world. This is the answer that I want to focus on. Thank you very much. Cannot hear your sound. Mute, Pak Rajo, mute. Oh. Yeah. oh, still the mute. <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay. Okay. Is there any question ready we, yet? I have some question to Professor Wichian, Mr. Yeah. Rajo. Okay, Wichian. Did you mean that Indonesian's brains more complicated than the other nation in Southeast Asia. I, believe, I trust. How about the cognition of Indonesian? Yes, of course. Is it linear that if we have the complicated brain, it means our cognition also complicated? I think so. Okay. Just the music components, components of so many sounds, uh, component either. All right. In Thais people, we talk, we speak with tonal language. We have only the tone, five tone. And then we have our Thai music. But Indonesia, Indonesia speak Baza Indonesia. And then mm. so many typical traditional music. Huh? So many uh -huh. components. Uh -huh. it's, of, of course, it's complicated. And then musically, cognitions and cognitions of the Indonesian brain will be different compared to Thai people. Huh? So we need to explore uh, the basics of the, the, uh, the type of the musicians of Indonesian people first. <laughs> so in, in your opinion, it's uh, good or not for the complicated cognition? Yes, good. Learn, of, course. Some... of course, it's good for discrimination. The... The brain functions is, is more of more function in discrimination between the sound or the pitch, huh? Because Thai people can discriminate only the pitch, huh? uh, ba, 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 only, only five tones, huh? but, but Indonesian brain can discriminate the sound more, more sound than Thai people, huh? <laughs> okay. okay. I, believe, I myself believe, huh? and I trust myself. I need to study to keep going on this study. Luckily, as an Indonesian. <laughs> okay, yeah, thank you. Yeah, I hope so. Yes, no. <laughs> okay, okay. Maybe, uh, I will continue uh, continue this uh, discussion, uh, and I will address this question to Professor Siti Prabhapur. Yeah, from from your presentation, I can conclude that the quality of uh, kind of music or a music product. Uh, mm -hmm. It's also depending on the depth or height of the people, Southas and Jairus. Mm -hmm. What is your opinion? No, oh, I think I have no opinion about it. <laughs> 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 Sorry. Okay. 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 Yeah. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I will continue uh, uh, this question to, I will address this to uh, Professor John. Uh, Professor, uh, in your uh, presentation, you mentioned that 
there is an urgent uh, need to update the education system to equip children with the skill to na navigate the uh, future of work and future of society. Uh, we are now living in the digital world. And, uh, uh, and perhaps conventional school are no longer exist. Yeah, form of the activities uh, in school are no longer anymore. Uh, maybe the future control the activities from the house. So what about the future arts life? Yeah, I mean, the skill of, for example, the skill of playing music, yeah, or musical instrument, for instance, whether we will be replaced by a robot or some kind of system equipped with the artificial intelligence, or yeah, as we as we know that this uh, this is something that we can uh, control by a single click, like click. yeah, okay. So, what do you think? Okay, thank you, Mr. Harjo. I can answer in English or Indonesia, both. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Basically, before we talk about education, we must discuss about the human. Uh, in my title, you can read that I, I use the term post truth. Yeah. So that's basically all Indonesian human must really understood about the meaning of post truth. Post truth itu adalah sebuah kebohongan yang dirasa benar. Yeah. Yeah, post truth. Yeah sebuah kebohongan yang dirasa benar. Maka dari itu, sebagai basic untuk kita menuju atau mengantisipasi entah itu 4.0 or artificial intelligence, kita harus jujur dulu. Nah, apakah semua guru musik terutama, kalau kita bicara dalam konteks musik, memiliki kejujuran itu, sadar. Tidak hanya melaksanakan apa yang ada, tapi harus berpikir kritis. So the tool is every teacher, every society need to have the critical thinking in what, in what the environment, in what they happen, in what they work, all. Jadi, semua harus berpikir kritis dulu. Jadi kita tidak bisa serta-merta merantisipasi teknologi tanpa kita jujur dengan diri sendiri. Apakah yang selama ini benar? So, pertanyaan Pak Raharjo memang itu agak teknis ya. Tapi yang saya tawarkan dari review saya, itu lebih pada konseptual. Memang konseptual itu adalah sebuah pengetahuan, bukan realita. Tetapi review itu adalah sebuah pemahaman konseptual dari realita yang ada. Selama ini pendidikan kita selalu mengaju kepada Amerika. Sistem, education system Indonesia itu mengarah kepada Amerika sistemnya bahkan termasuk materi-materinya. Jadi ketika kita bicara tradisi budaya, tapi frame kita itu adalah frame Amerika. Jadi kita juga harus menyadari bahwa kondisi kita sekarang masih banyak dilikupi oleh cara berpikir postkolonial, yaitu manusia-manusia terjajah yang hanya merdeka di atas kertas. Nah ini kesadaran ini penting dulu, ya supaya kita bi bisa belajar. Kalau tanpa disadari kita belajar, maka kita masuk ke dalam post-truth tadi. Kebohongan yang kita rasakan benar. Nah, itu yang terjadi. Jadi saya tidak mengatakan bahwa teknologi will solve all the problem in education. No, tidak seperti itu. Ya, itu kebutuhan bukan di negara kita. Tapi yang paling penting di negara kita, yang tadi disampaikan oleh Profesor Wichian, bahwa kemampuan otak kita luar biasa, kemampuan berpikirnya bagaimana? Itu yang saya tanyakan sebetulnya. Apakah ada kognisi? Proses berpikir kita juga complicated. Karena apa? Karena kita lebih senang berada dalam zona nyaman. Zona yang ngulang-ngulang terus-menerus. gitu. Ya, Itu yang terjadi. Jadi teknologi bagi saya itu hanya tools. Teknologi just a tools. Dia hanya alat. So the important thing, the most important thing is the human behind the gun. Manusianya itu yang lebih penting daripada teknologinya. Nah, kalau if we talk about human, it's mean we must to be the frank people, we must be honest people. Ya, kita harus menjadi orang yang jujur dulu. 
jujur itu tidak berarti bahwa kita membuat hal yang salah tidak ya nah dalam proses pendidikan question and answer itu juga yang paling penting bukan hanya one way ketika orang belajar itu hanya gurunya yang berkhotbah tapi tidak memberi kesempatan kepada murid untuk bertanya nah ini si guru bisa jujur nggak bahwa guru itu bukan segala galanya ya Guru itu bukan penguasa segala-galanya. Guru terbatas. Nah, menurut saya kejujuran ini yang penting. Ini yang perlu dibina mulai sejak SD, bahkan sampai S3. From primary school to PhD program. We must more honestly, jujur, apa adanya. Nah, itu menurut saya iklim. Iklim humanisasi itu akan timbul. gitu. Nah, teknologi, itu kita perlu belajar. Karena dia tulus. Tulus masa kini maksudnya. Kira-kira gitu. Okay. okay, thank you very much for this explanation. One more question, Professor. Uh, when you talk about the uh, learning content, you mentioned about the uh, one, the uh, global civilization, and then two, innovative and creative, and then three, technology, and the last is uh, interpersonal skill. Uh, could you describe more about those four aspects? Thank you. Ya, yeah. dari beberapa aspek itu, itu saling mendukung, ya saling mendukung. Tetapi yang paling penting, yang saya katakan humanitis tadi, itu kita punya persoalan di interpersonal, ya hubungan interpersonal. Kita sering misalnya contoh, kita menyampaikan sebuah kritik, kritik itu sering dianggap sebagai hujatan. Jadi orang Indonesia ini kalau mengkritik itu musuhan. Pemahamannya gitu. Karena kita harus belajar bahwa yang namanya kritik should have a solution. Itu namanya kritik. Kalau hanya kritik tanpa solusi, itu menyalah-nyalahkan nyacat. Nah, maka interpersonal ini lebih penting. Karena masyarakat kita itu adalah masyarakat komunal, bukan masyarakat individual. Tetapi dengan adanya ketidakjujuran, kelihatannya komunal, tapi pribadinya individual. Nah, seharusnya dalam konteks pendidikan akademis, ya, maksudnya akademik, itu tidak terjadi individual, harusnya kolegial, kolektif. Jadi saling mengkritik itu penting. Bahwa yang saya sebutkan tadi itu adalah saling berhubungan memang, bagian-bagian ya. Faktor-faktor yang saling berhubungan. Tapi yang paling penting adalah bagi saya interpersonal. Hubungan interpersonal itu penting. Jadi jangan menganggap bahwa kritik itu adalah hujatan. Kecuali yang mengkritik tanpa memberi solusi. Nah, ini yang menurut saya yang lebih penting dari keempat poin di awal tadi. Begitu, Pak Rarjo. Oke, okay. so thank you very much for the explanation. Is there any more question, maybe? We still have like one, two minutes. Itu di room chat ada pertanyaan untuk... Ya, yeah. uh, I cannot read from that far. So... Oke. Okay. Ya, pertanyaan kebetulan ditujukan kepada saya, bagaimana peran negara Indonesia sendiri dalam menghadapi atau melawan bahaya post di Indonesia? Baik, Saudara Agni Saraswati. Indonesia sedang dalam proses mengatasi post -truth. Jadi post-truth ini sebetulnya bukan barang baru. Tahun 90-an itu sudah. Tapi tahun 2000-an mulai dipopulerkan lagi. Negara kita tahu apa itu post-truth, tetapi kita juga harus sadar bahwa negara Indonesia itu, Indonesia is a big country. It's not easy to solve any problem. Tapi ada usaha seperti itu. Jadi bukan berarti bahwa kita sudah menyadari post-truth, menurut saya belum menyadari secara sepenuhnya, tapi ada beberapa gelintir yang mulai menyadari, termasuk pihak pemerintah. Demikian, Mbak Agni. Oke, okay. thank you. More question? Maybe one more? Maybe some question to Professor Vijian, because this is a very interesting <laughs> Oke. Okay. Okay. so... Um, Thank you very much for this uh, nice uh, discussion this morning. Uh, probably, uh, where's Will? Uh, 
we ran out of time. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, our respected uh, keynote speakers and all participants of this event, um, that was the end of the presentation. All papers are very interesting and hopefully we can get most of it of the uh, today's conference. Once again, on behalf of the fourth ICPA or the International Conference on Performing Arts, I would like to express my deepest gratitude for all form of participation. And uh, once again, let us pray that uh, this pandemic situation can be end very soon and uh, we can organize the ICPAs next year with a better atmosphere. Now I will give back the floor back to the master of ceremony. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Vijayan. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Vijayan, Professor Joan. Dr. Rahadja for smoothly organizing the first uh, keynote presentation session. Now, uh, well, soon I will hand the floor to Dr. Randa M. Heni Winahyuning Seh M. Hum. She has been a faculty member of the Performing Arts Faculty of EZ Yogyakarta as a lecturer in dance study program. Besides teaches, she also researches and also dances, of course. Um, because of her managerial capacity, he was trusted by the institution to be our former uh, head of uh, insurance, uh, uh, quality insurance offices. And um, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dr. Randa M. Henny Linah Yuningse M. Hum. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Peace be with you. Shalom and Om Swastiastu. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It is very blessed and happy that we can meet and join to this virtual conference. It is the fourth international conference on performing arts. First of all, I would like to say thank you very much to the committee. It is my honor that uh, the committee asked me, Henny Winahyu, as a Surfing, uh, I will be surfing as your moderator. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a parallel session. We will have four presenters that will deliver their statement, idea, and their work in the theme of strengthening musical potential as a humanism reconstruction model. The first presenter will be Mr. Kardi Laksono. Mr. Laksono is a lecturer at EC Yogyakarta, Indonesia Institute of the Art of Yogyakarta. 
Today, he is going to share his paper entitled The Post-Corona Man. <laughs> it's very impressive and uh, it's very cool title, right? All right, after Mr. Kardilak's no presentation, we will have uh, Ms. Karinda and Huda and Ms. Fortunatia Tasjasrinas too that will uh, share their paper entitled Music as a Supporting Media in Understanding of Meaning of Poetry in the Musicalization of Poetry Performance, a case study of Sastra Bulan Purnama at Tembi Rumah Budaya. And then we will have uh, the theme from Thailand. It, that will be uh, Mr. or Miss Thiraya Tanti Pinayot, Ms. Warner Kurot Saska, Parakrawat Siti Parapron, Parapor, I'm sorry, um, that will uh, share their paper entitled The Arts of Health Food, The Arts of Health Food Design Post Corona, uh, Post COVID 19 Pandemic. And the last presenter, we will have Miss Oriana Tio Parahita Nangola that will share their, his, uh, her idea about Sariswara method as a musical learning concept for children in Indonesia. Ladies and gentlemen, before we start the presentation, I would like to let you know that we have only uh, an hour uh, for present presentation and also QA. So we will have about sorry, 10 minutes only for presentation to each presenter uh, to deliver uh, their presentation. And then after that, we will have half an hour as a QA session. And all, uh, all participants, you, uh, you can write down your uh, response or your um, question into the chat room or chat box. Or also you can raise uh, your hands uh, after, right after the fourth presentation. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to invite Mr. Karti Laksono to deliver his paper. Mr. Karti, 10 minutes is yours now. Karti Laksono uh, is here now. Yeah, okay, all right. 10 minutes for your presentation. Thank you. I'm sorry. Uh, we can we cannot hear your voice, Mr. Kardi. Maybe you uh, you should uh, pass your uh, button for microphone. Unmute first. No, no, not yet. Uh, Mr. Cardi, could you please to put off your uh, ear earphone, your headset? Please plug off your headset. No, I think uh, you should just use your uh, earphone. Mungkin dilepas saja itunya uh, headsetnya dari laptopnya dilepas dari laptopnya. No, we still we still we still uh, cannot hear your voice. No, no. I think uh, you should not use your uh, earphone. Put it off. Put it off for your ear and also for uh, from your uh, laptops. Uh, and also I can, uh, I, it's still uh, mute, I think. Uh, please, please set your microphone setting. Unmute. Because uh, we still see your microphone, I think. So let's see. Yes. Your Your microphone is still mute. Yes, 
Hmm? Oh, Pak Kardilaksono, please try to find the button at the right side of microphone and then uh, yeah, try to uh, I think you can choose the microphone and uh, no and click it microphone. Select microphone and uh, make sure that it is suitable with your headset. Uh, Pak Kardi, uh, excuse me, uh, is it possible to switch uh, your turn so you can try to find out uh, how is the technique uh, for, you know, uh, turn on your microphone? And then we continue to the second uh, presenter, I'm sorry. So please help a uh, technician to, to help Ma Pak Kardi Laksono to, to fetch uh, the microphone. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to invite uh, uh, the second presenter. It will be the team, actually Miss Karinda and Huda and Miss uh, Fortunata Piastrinestu with the paper entitled Music as a Supporting Media in Understanding the Meaning of Poetry in the Musicalization of Poetry Performance, a case study of Sastra Bulan Purnama at Tembi Rumah Budaya. Ibu Fortunata and Ibu Karinda, 10 minutes uh, is yours now. Hopefully, Ibu Fortunata and also Ibu Karinda uh, are here, and hopefully also we don't have any problem with the uh, technique. Please. Yeah, thank you, uh, moderator, Bu Henny. Uh, I would invite Bu Karindra, please. Bu Karindra. Is there uh, Bu Karindra in Zoom meeting? Okay. Oh, Bu Karindra uh, is, okay. is here. Bu Karindra. We we do not see that Bu Karindra is here. Okay. Okay. I will uh, start. Wait a minute, <laughs> Karindra is not here. Ladies and gentlemen, Ibu Fortunatia, Fortunata Tiasrinestu is a lecturer at the Music Department, Indonesia Institute of the Art of Yogyakarta. And now she's a director of a, a postgraduate program at EC Yogyakarta. Oke, okay, uh, wait a minute. Oh, oh, wait a minute to Henny. It's okay. Take your time. <laughs> Because Karindra is not here. So I must. Oh, uh, yeah. uh, we contact, we try to contact Miss Karindra and she okay. is already to join the Zoom now. Okay. Okay. And because 10 minutes is very fast, uh, just make sure that uh, Mr. the team of uh, from Thailand, Mr. Raya, Ms. Werner, and also Ms. Kurut Chaka are here now. Is it, uh, is it right? So for the next 10 minutes, we have uh, three of, uh, uh, three of, you know, presenter from Thailand. Uh, are you ready, Ibu Fortunata? Yes. Uh... Okay. Uh, thank you for the committee, uh, it's Pa. We, uh, Karindra, Nabila Huda, and I uh, will present our article 
Yeah, the title music as a supporting media in understanding the meaning of poetry in the musicalization of poetry performance, a case study of Sastra Bulan Purnama at Tembi Rumah Budaya. Uh, the public appreciation uh, of uh, poetry has grown that poetry text is not text only in the book that we can read, but also uh, we can get declamation and we can uh, musicalization of poetry. Musicalization of poetry, uh, uh, there is two words and two de uh, definitions about poetry and music. The differences of opinion regarding the musicalization of poetry uh, a, with the musicalization of poetry, people will be more interested and can accelerate the introduction of poetry to the public. And the second, the existence of musical elements was considered altering the meaning of the poetry. The problem in this study uh, the differences of opinion regarding the musicalization of poetry, which has changed into uh, prose and poems. The purpose in this study that uh, this study uh, aims to describe the function and purpose of music in the musicalization of poetry performance and explain the process of music creation, supporting the understanding of the content and meaning of the poetry. Uh, our methodology is qualitative study, use a case study approach of Sastra Bulan Purnama at Tembi Rumah Budaya. Sastra Bulan Purnama is a familiar and also regularly uh, uh, poetry musicalization. Yeah, Sastra Bulan Purnama, it name Sastra Bu Bulan Purnama. And the informant, First, head of the event, uh, second, musician and purity readers, and the third is audience. Uh, the data were collected through interviews and observation. Uh, voice recording audio during the interview were transcribed using verbatim into written form. The transcript that data were then coached using words that represent its statement from the informant. The analysis and content, the role of musicalization of poetry as a literary introduction media. People will be more interested, get some reference of work or poetry. And the second differences in audience responses. Some informants who tended to feel more interested in poetry without music uh, as a declamation, but some informants who tended to feel more interested in musicalization of poetry. Uh, this is the table of differences in audience responses. Impression of uh, connoisseurs musicalization of poetry. With music, uh, cover the poet's shortcomings. Uh, without music, make the audience feel sleepy, perhaps, without, without music. So we just hear the words and uh, some uh, people speak, uh, talk each other. But with music, cover the poetry's shortcoming. With music, also uh, distract the attention in the other side. But without music, make the audience feel bored. Billboard. So uh, we can talk each other when we hear the poetry. With music, uh, build atmosphere. Or how, uh, with music, we can imagine, we can perception uh, sound, we can perception uh, words, and music, uh, build atmosphere. Uh, makes me uh, comfort, perhaps, uh, more happier, more. Uh, more sad perhaps, <laughs> but without music, lack display of expression. With music, uh, bring the poetry to life and build emotion. I think with music, poetry uh, build emotion. And without music, uh, build textures. Uh, this is the differences in audience response 
uh, about impression of conscious musicalization of poetry. And uh, the second in, um, impression of declamation enthusiasts uh, with music, uh, meaning bias, split focus, uh, not capturing uh, the uh, in sense, blur the meaning, spoiling the poetry and forcing without music. Uh, in the other hand, without music in declamation, easy to understand and meaning conveyed. Through this opinion, it's known that the main factor of, uh, I'm sorry. Through this opinion, it's known that the main factor of this uh, satisfaction in the musicalization of poetry lies in the depths of the beginning of the poetry context. Why this problem can occur? Uh, the meaning of poetry is altered because poetry and music are not in harmony. Poetry and music are not in harmony because do not understand the content, the content and meaning of the poetry and perhaps limited musical knowledge of musicians and creating music based on personal taste. What's uh, the solutions? The music created for the musicalization of poetry must support the understanding of the meaning of poetry. Music that can be in harmony with poetry. Music arrangement process in the musicalization of poetry. Uh, first, understanding poetry, uh, content and meaning, and the second, the musician makes a musical uh, framework and adjusts musical elements such uh, chords, dynamics, and tempo according to the poetry. Uh, for example, atmosphere of poetry uh, telling sadness uh, and characteristic of music tend to use minor or diminished chords, tend to use a slow tempo, and atmosphere of poetry uh, uh, telling joy uh, and characteristic of music tend to use ma major chords, tend to use a fast tempo, and telling violence tend to use a fast tempo, and telling peace tends to use a slow tempo. Uh, obstacles of the music making process. Uh, the, the difficulty in understanding or capturing the meaning of poetry that were made into poetry musicalization, uh, the existence of an asymmetrical form of poetry. And this is the solution is re-examining, discussion, practice, and evaluation. Music as a supporting element in a literary performance. The music has a function that can be used to make show more interesting. Music could help emphasize the meaning of poetry and music could be used as a bridge or a medium to help audience understand the poetry more easily. Uh, and this is the last presentation, conclusions. Musicalization of poetry can be used as a medium for introducing literature to the public. The musicalization of poetry can attract the attention of the audience to come back to the event so that through re repeated attendance, attendance, the audience get new references about literary or poetry works. And second, music that can support understanding the meaning of poetry is music that is created according to the content and meaning of the poetry. The musician must understand the content, theme, plot, meaning, and atmosphere. The ideal music in a musicalization of poetry performance is music created by paying attention to the arrangement of tempo, chord, and dynamics that are adjusted to the content and the meaning of the poetry so that the poetry and music can be in harmony. Another supporting factor is conducting discussion and practicing so that musicalization of poetry can be presented to the maximum.
The purpose of combining beauty with music is because music has a function that can be used to make the show more interesting as long as both the poetry and music are performed in harmony. In addition, through the musicalization of poetry, the, performer, the performs of the musicalization of poetry have hope that the audience can understand the content and meaning of the performance poetry more easily. Uh, this is the end of our presentation and thank you uh, to Henny as a moderator. I with Karindra, perhaps Karindra can... Karindra? Okay, thank you, Bu Henny. Uh, yes, Karindra Nabila Huda is here. Uh, is there any... Karindra? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Bu Henny. Karindra, is uh, it enough or uh, do you want to uh, presentation? Enough? Okay. Time is also running short because uh, 10 minutes is very, uh, very short time. So I think yeah. uh, you can, you can uh, add more uh, explanation in the QA session. Okay, okay. Thank, thank you. you. Very much. Thank you, Buheni. Thank you, Karindra. Yeah. Uh, this is very, it was very interesting uh, presentation from Ibu Fortunata and also Ibu Karin, uh, Karindra, Karinda. And now I would like to invite uh, Pak Kartiraksono. Is it a problem uh, have a, uh, with the microphone is soft already? Pak Kardi? We still have a problem with uh, with the microphone. No, we we still uh, cannot hear your voice. No. Um. Oh, Pakardi, if it possible, please uh, trying to find uh, another device maybe you can change uh, your laptop laptop or you can use only your maybe handphone if it's possible no we still cannot hear your voice uh, because uh, we uh, we can see the note uh, in the left uh, left side uh, your your microphone still mute Well, even though it's uh, unmute, I still uh, cannot hear anything. All right, we can try another uh, 10 minutes for you, Pak Kardi Laksono. So please uh, try to find a way to get uh, to get uh, your voice to, uh, to us. So I would like to invite uh, to the next uh, presenter. It will be our friends or uh, colleagues from Thailand. Uh, they will be Miss or Mr. Tiraya Tanti Piapop, Warner Kurochaka, Pakarawat City Prapapor, that will be delivered their presentation entitled The Arts of Health Food Design Post COVID 19 Pandemic. Uh, the team from Thailand, 10 minutes is yours now. Hopefully, you are here. One of you or two of you are here. Oh, thank you very much. Okay, can you hear me? Okay, good morning to the organizing committee and the attendance in ICPA 2021. First, I would like to say it's an honor for me uh, to be here and to make it in time, I would like to start my presentation right now. My topic today is the arts of healthy food design in post-COVID-19 pandemic. Um, <clears throat> the art 
of healthy food design for COVID-19 pandemic. You know, um, nowadays the global COVID-19 pandemic had shifted people's focus due to its new normals and lockdowns. Um, and social distancing. Most people are now more careful about their health and more watchful of their food. So it's only natural that this trend will lead to high demand of healthy food in the post-coronavirus era. With COVID-19, COVID consumers suddenly um, realized that if your immune system is weak, if you are overweight or if you have diabetes, then you are more exposed. So what does the future look like? There are a few major scenarios being discussed by the food industry. One of them is people have really learned the, the joy of cooking at home and they have discovered the cost savings. Associated with eating from home, they use their own labor and saving to buy better ingredients and they will continue to do so. Okay, here is new dot data from Inference Central. Show that 88% um, of consumers are cooking more meals at home and uh, you know, uh, the report also found that over half of consumers are cooking out of what they already have stocked in their panties um, and freezers and are reorganizing their food storage. Over half of consumers trying out new recipes uh, and consider their microwaves, toasters, coffee makers, slow cookers, cake pans, blenders, and mixer variable kitchen assets during the time of COVID-19. Many consumers have also changed their eating habits over the last couple of months since more people have been staying home. 70% of consumers say they are snacking, eating more, and with 39% uh, finding themselves eating a more balanced breakfast and more time on their hands. 43% report eating more fruits, 42% report eating more vegetables, and 80% are eating more protein. And people are more buying ingredients to cook by themselves and be more careful of choosing more healthy ones. So one of the most interesting oil after COVID-19 pandemic, guess what? We which oil is Sasha and she oil because it has a lot of protein, omega-3, C9, vitamin, and so on, which is really good for health. So um, let's get to know more about Sasha and she. Here is about the Sasha and she um, nut look like and the oil look like. Sasha Inchi, or in the scientific name as Plukinicia volubilis lineal, is native to the Peruvian Amazon and is recognized in other parts of the world as a suitable crop and viable commercial applications. In recent years, there has been growing interest in developing the Sasha and she plant as a noble source of oil, rich in unsaturated fatty acids. Um, the review present, uh, the review present um, information on, on the major and minor chemical components. Health effect and utilization of different parts, such as seeds, seed shells, and leaves, of this pen. In particular, the physical chemical properties and oxidative stability of Sasha and she seed oil are described in many papers. And the whole Sasha and she plant has been 
utilized to generate um, nutritional, cosmetic, and pharmaceutical products with the goal to maximize its economic value. Okay. As I told you that such an issue or Pokinichia is a tropical plant in the UFO by Aziz family, comprising of 19 species and 12 are in South America and seven in Europe, is one of the more plant sources. Large linoleic acid, about 35 to 45.2%, uh, and linoleic acid um, as 36.8%. And also high in vitamin E, especially gamma and delta tocopherol, which is more than 1,900 1, milligram per kilogram, which is also good in anti-aging and cancer prevention. But pure sasha in oil has a unique smell that is difficult for some people to consume. So this is the art of food design. How will you solve this problem? How will you design to make Sasha and Chi oil easier to consume? At the present, the formula has been proved by using Sasha and Chi oil mixed with other vegetable oils, such as um, rice bran oil with the most popular one to make it smell better and have a taste that better than just pure Sasha and she oil. <clears throat> okay, let's get to know more about rice bran, rice bran oil. Um, is the oil extracted from the hard other brown layer of rice called chaff? or rice husk is known for its high smoke point of 232 degrees Celsius and mild flavor, make it suitable for high temperature cooking methods such as stir frying and deep frying. It's popular as a cooking oil in the Indian subcontinent and East Asian countries. Normally, rice bran oil con contains total uh, vitamin E in all forms, uh, approximately 191 to 2,349 milligram per, kilo, per kilogram. The difference of ratio between Sasha and Chi oil and rice bran oil in its formula. Delta and gamma to level are possibly different as well. Thus the aim of the study was to study was to study the vitamin E level in pure in pure Sasha in Chi oil compared to mixed Sasha in Chi oil with rice bran oil. And let's get to know roughly about vitamin E. The vitamin E first known as an essential vitamin is found in nature in eight different forms. We can divide into two groups of, 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 of their forms. The first one is tocopherols and the second one is tocotrienols. Tocopherols has alpha, beta, gamma, and delta. And tocotrienol has the same alpha, beta, gamma, and delta variants. <clears throat> Many studies have shown that such an oil has, has high gamma and delta tocopherol, but less in alpha tocopherol. In, term, in terms of uh, perspective of anti-aging, which recently focused on gamma tocopherol due to its properties, 
to exert a traffic effect on nucleophilic mutations, or you can say mutation causing agents and aid in um, the chemoprotective properties of the antioxidant system, glutathione. Uh, and gamma tocopherol appears to be a more effective trap for lipophilic electrophiles than the alpha tocopherol. Both gamma tocopherol and its metabolites, uh, but not alpha tocopherol can do that, can inhibit cyclooxygenase activity or, you know, as the anti inflammatory properties. While the exact um, mechanism of action of delta tocopherol has yet to be fully identified, it appears to have the ability to scavenge uh, free radicals, thereby protecting cells against oxidative damage. Both gamma tocopherol and delta tocopherol can scavenge uh, reactive nitrogen species in addition to reactive oxygen species like alpha tocopherol. Gamma tocopherol appears, like I said, to be more effective trap for like lipophilic erectophils than alpha tocopherol. Mm -hmm. That is good for the anti-inflammation properties. And how can, sorry, can I turn back? And as I mentioned above, that is might be the difference um, of gamma and delta tocopherol between per sacha inchi oil and mixed sacha inchi oil. Uh, so we have to find gamma and delta tocopherol level by using high performance liquid chromatography method. And here is the materials and method we use to test to find gamma and delta tocopherol level. As you see in the picture, here are the bottles of um, per sacha inchi oil and mixed sacha inchi oil with rice bran oil, one by one, weight by weight. Um, we use, we have to do it three times and find the average. So we use at least three bottles of oil and each bottle contain 100 gram of the oil. And here is the method. We use this HPLC machine. Both of them, gamma and delta tocopherol, use the same method mm. with high HPLC from high performance liquid chromatography. We use this, and then here is the result. After we test three bottles, of them and find the average in pure Sasha Inchi oil. The average is 163.42 and delta tocopherol in pure Sasha Inchi. The average is 97.25. And the total of them is 260 and uh, two hundred sixty point sixty point six seven, and this from the mixed oil. The mixed oil we we will see gamma tocopherol. The average is less than the pure Sasha Inchi oil. It's just only seventy three point six 
seven, and delta has less than the pure oil as well, just only forty seven point five five nine. And the total is just only one hundred twenty one point two six. Is the summary of the gamma in pure oil, the gamma to cover in mixed oil. You can see it's different. Gamma and delta to six zero and total gamma and delta in mixed oil just one to one. Okay, so the conclusion, the pure sasha in she oil has, you know, high gamma to cofuel and delta to cofuel, which are on focus in anti-aging and cancer prevention. Mixed sasha in she oil with rice bran oil is one of the mixing of blending formulas in the market, which meant to improve the flavor and smell, but the results of this study revealed that the mixed oil um, has less gamma and delta to fuel. Mm, so the consumer should be noted. All right. Here, um, that is all of my presentation. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Mr. Raya. Uh, it is very interesting, I think, and I think it is a new atmosphere in this discussion uh, because in the pandemic uh, situation, we now in this uh, in this presentation we talk about the uh, potential of uh, potential oil. Uh, sorry, uh, rice bran oil and also sasa sisi oil. Uh, it is have uh, ingredient called gamma and delta toko. Toko Ferro? Toko Yeah, all right. Uh, yes, yeah. We can uh, discuss and talk uh, more detail in the QA uh, session. And now I have uh, Mr. Kardilaksono. Yes. Hello. It's the device and ready to deliver uh, his presentation, isn't it? Pak okay. Kadi? Oh, good. Uh, since uh, you, you use two devices, I, I hear. Yes. Yes, Mr. You, you used to devise this too. <laughs> all right, post corona man. Uh, yeah, all right. Pak uh, Gantirasono with the post corona man. 10 minutes uh, is yours now, please. Okay, uh, thank you, Ms. Annie, as a moderator. I'm sorry uh, because of the trouble of this technique. Uh, okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I will to present my uh, presentation about uh, post corona man. Uh, uh, a big question, why we, uh, the big question, but why we think about uh, Corona? Because, uh, no, no, no. Uh, because, because in these two years, uh, 2019 and 2020. Pakadi, please uh, share your uh, screen in the right. Uh... Yes, 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 you got it now. Thank you. Okay. Uh, because uh, in these two years, uh, 2019, 2020, we have a uh, a pandemic with a uh, name of coronavirus. So uh, the big question mark about how about a man after the pandemic ends or maybe not ends. Uh, this is uh, my, my, my big question because based on Saturday, uh, Based on the grid health in ID page, 
update this COVID-19 entitled WHO in the future, there will be no return to normal life like before the COVID-19 pandemics. Why? Because the coronavirus is currently the main focus of attention in all countries. We know uh, the data use of, uh, I read this paper on August 5, 2020, more than a million, uh, 18 million people were confirmed positive and more than uh, 11 million people was declared cured. This coronavirus is also spread in more than 200 countries in the world with so many countries confirms in this coronavirus. It's not surprising. So that this corona pandemic is a special concern for all mankind of, uh, in the world. So uh, I think uh, almost uh, every day for months, knew about our corona pandemics became the public attention until right now. The attention regarding the corona pandemic does not only stop at a large scope such as a country, but also becomes a special concern in a very small scope, namely individual. No, uh, every individual's thing and uh, about a uh, coronavirus. So in dealing with this corona pandemic, life both individually and most broadly can be grouped into simple perspective, namely optimism, and pessimism. When we, uh, almost every human being will choose of these two points of view. One form of pessimism is in dealing with uh, the corona pandemic can be in the form of mental disorder due to the pandemic. Okay, uh, right now the world is currently becoming a confusing world where the calm situation is becoming increasingly complicated due to this corona pandemic. Almost all humans today live in the shadow of the normal life that uh, once excited. Humans are current, currently hoping and expecting a form of a life that excited before this corona pandemic excited. But what human feel today is trying to live as normal and possible during the time of the corona pandemic. The pessimism that emerged in human life during the corona pandemic seems to remind us that humans have life live more in a world full of optimism. Optimism, as we know, has been built by human for uh, as, so long ago. Of learning or enlightenment is an uh, even an of enlightenment the human mind, which marks the birth of the modern society. Human characteristic is rational. Through this of learning, people and effort come by an extraordinary spirit of optimism. The optimism brought by of learning seems to give great hope that the future and mankind is very. Right. Uh, now we know in the pandemic, we know uh, more million people dead. But in this question, uh, why we, we uh, uh, people died because uh, in pandemic corona, that we know a death is a uh, uh, every day happens, but in pandemic corona, uh, this is the big question too about death. Because death is a, a correlating with uncertainty and authenticity of human being. Now in the time of the corona pandemic, enjoying today is a tendency human behavior to look at the future full of uncertainty. Triar Kara said, uh, quoted as saying as by Nukroho, that in Kriku Roman, for example, an inscription was found in the catacomb setting, Carpe Diem, Coromemus Nos Rosis, Crass Name Ermour. 
just use it every day. Let us wear the rose crown because tomorrow morning will we die. It's so uh, beautiful point, I think. And then as a major premise that all humans will certain, uh, certainly die, but there is a, an, an element of uncertainty in death is everyone's future. The uncertainty in the certainty of death is worse. The uncertainty of this death is related to the most of our arrival of death itself. The parable of the arrival of death is like to the arrival of the thief who is expected by the, the owner of the house. And then uncertainty uh, in the certainty of death is a form of a uncertainty that is existential. This is one of the condition of the global uncertainty resulting from the corona pandemic. This corona pandemic has occurred globally and every country in the world is facing a similar situation. Uncertainty in the certainty of death does require a strategy in interpreting and understanding self and the culture that surrounds all humans. In this case, a cultural strategy is needed in dealing with the uncertainty in the state. The cultural strategy provides meaning and understanding of uncertainty in existential debts. Human can provide a form of appreciation of existential debt. Living an existential debt can take a form of living ones. So uh, the last question to know about uh, pandemic corona, we have to know about ourselves because this is the, the basic question from the uh, unseen Greek till, until this uh, postmodernism post about what is yourself. So we know have to you know to know yourself so know yourself understanding oneself is a process that is required as of human being to be able to discover the essence the essence on identity of its human being the concept of understanding yourself is not something new especially during the this corona pandemic more than 2,000 years ago, a philosopher named Plato presented concept knowing arete, which can be translated as a form of virtue. Arete can also mean good at something. In its journey, the term arete has changed its meaning no longer good for something, but as has the meaning of the an anthropine, which is an advantage that every human being has in life. The notion of arete as anthropine appeared in the fifth century in the Sophist teaching system. So during the corona pandemic, human will always seek the form or virtue that is contained in every human being, especially, especially during the corona pandemic. Human also strengthen their knowledge and knowledge to be able to immediately find a cure or vaccine from coronavirus. So the concept of arete is very relevant to be used to be, some, to be someone, to be able to find a virtue in him. So I think this is uh, my last presentation, my last slide of presentation. And thank you very much for your attention. Terima kasih. Saya kembalikan ke Bu Heni. Thank you very much. Mrs. Heni, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Pak Kardi Laksono. It was the wonderful presentation. Uh, we talk uh, philosophically about uh, the, death, the meaning of death and also understand uh, yourself, uh, talking out, uh, with uh, ourselves during the uh, pandemic situation. All right, and now we would like uh, to invite uh, Miss Oriana Tio as the fourth presenter today at the parallel session. Uh, she will be deliver, uh, delivering her 
a paper entitled Sariswa, Sariswara Method as a Musical Learning Concept for Children in Indonesia. Uh, Miss Tio, Miss Oriana Tio, uh, your time is yours. 10 minutes uh, uh, now is yours. Okay, thank you, Buheni. Uh, could you hear my voice clearly? Yes, yes. Very clearly. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Um, hi, everyone. Um, I, Oriana Tio Parahita Nenggolan, with my college, uh, and then Ismudiati, and also with my student, Benadito Anceto Manik. And I will deliver uh, my paper, uh, Sariswara Method as a Musical Learning Concept for Children in Indonesia. Let me share my uh, PPT. So I will start uh, my presentation today with the background of the research and no, we... the concept of music no, education. Uh, Ms. Dio, Ms. Dio, please uh, share your screen uh, correctly because we do not yeah. see. Yes, now we got it. Thank you. Okay, yeah. Okay, thank you. So is it clear, uh, clearly seen, yeah, with my presentation, Buheni? Is it clear, seen? Yes, yes, we can see clearly. We'll yes. start my presentation today with the background of the research. Yeah, okay, thank you. Okay. I'll start with the background of the research. Uh, the music education, the concept of music education is that the music belongs to everyone. So everyone deserves a music education. This is, uh, I take, um, I quote a uh, site from Holland and Taka. And it is the most substantial reason why music lies in the school curriculum. And structure music education ideally start early age and build higher education. And music education that begins at early ages uh, provide good benefit for the growth um, and development of the individual to improve culture, intellectual, spiritual, and also social understanding. And briefly, music education can be said to be the process of developing the musical ability for individual. Oh, you lost, uh, I think maybe Ms. Theo lost the signal. I'm sorry, uh, because I think the internet connection is not stable. Mm -hmm. I will continue my... At least again, share your screen. Yeah, okay. I will continue yeah. it. And then the culture background in which... Uh, no, but we... we cannot see, but I'm sorry, we cannot see your... Yes, it's not. All right, thank you. <laughs> so, uh, the cultural background in which individual life is an ideal source of learning material in music education, such as the folk song is a primary uh, learning material in music education. Folk songs uh, consists of a various kinds of learning material that fit uh, children's growth and development, exceedingly physical and psychological. By using folk song, children learn to recognize their religion culture and become part of their life. And therefore, in music education, folk song play an essential role. The Western music education method carried out by the prominent music educators such as Dal Cross, um, Orf, uh, Kodai, Suzuki, put uh, folk song as the principal resources. And for them, folk song, uh, folk song consists of several um, elements similar to the main element in music as much as singing, moving, speech, and Again, I think uh, the connection is unstable. Yeah. Well, because uh, yes. now Japan okay. is a very um, big rain, I think. The, the, Outside, the, I can hear the, uh, the rain. Maybe because of that, the yeah. connection is not stable. 
Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, okay. I can I think I can read my presentation. And then nowadays music education in Indonesia still strive to find its form. That's because Indonesia has a wide of a culture diversity and this condition is sometimes giving advantages and disadvantages. In the view of education, the richness of culture diversity could expand the learning material, but on another side well. Sometimes weather, sometimes the technology is not friendly with us, but uh, sometimes it's very close and very helpful. All right, we can patient, we can just uh, take it. <laughs> yeah, okay, thank you. And then um, this condition is sometimes giving advantages and advantages in the field of music education. The richness of a cultural diversity could expand the learning material, but on another side, it is raising a new problem because the teacher gets um, misled about how to use culture as a learning material in music education. And moreover, the, the music teacher tend to use Western music um, education material to teach the student. And it makes music education in Indonesia still a blurry field in the school, school curriculum. So uh, this research will try to over an education concept uh, with, uh, to help the, the music teacher uh, to solve the problem, how to include the culture as a material, uh, as their material learning. So uh, this research over uh, education concept from Dewantara and Sariwara method. So this is a qualitative result that are explained descriptively, and this result will describe the Kajar Dewantara thought on the concept of the learning method in Indonesia, or what is often referred to as a Sanismara method. And the data were gathered from the observation, interview, and literature study. And the analysis of research that is done by describing, describing the obtained from the observation, interview, and literature study. And this is the result of the study. Um, the Indonesian music education concept is inseparable from the Indonesian national concept of education. So according to Ki Hajar Dewantara, the concept of education in Indonesia is rooted in Indonesia culture to advance the nation civilization to be in line with other countries. If educational goal will achieve through art. And this is also this concept uh, proposed by the Japanese uh, idea about uh, that uh, in Japanese we call it Ambuko Raso Angestuiji. I hope <laughs> I hope there is a, a clear uh, to pronounce in Japanese uh, word yeah, Ambuko Rara Ambuko Raras Angestuiji. So uh, this Angestuiji um, has closest meaning to the arts. So um, the the word of raras is the connected uh, the connector word, uh, which connect um, education and art. And this is why the reason uh, in national education concept of Kiajar Dewantara he include the music or art curriculum or art subject in a curriculum. So of Ambukoraras and SDG become the of national education. The implementation of Ambukoraras and SDG um, is in Sarasua uh, art uh, is the form of children with a noble character according to their cultures. So Saraswara method combined Wirogo, Wiromo, and Wiroso. Uh, Wirogo means cycle motor, uh, cycle motor aspect, and then Wiromo means cognitive, and also Wiroso means affective. Now, uh, the, the, those, uh, this element is implemented in uh, Trying to reconnect again, uh, Ms. Thiel. 
I don't know because I'm of... so sorry. <laughs> yeah, I continue. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I, I'll continue my presentation. Pirago means body. It means that students will understand uh, learning material through their bodies. And we also means feeling. It means that the, the student will exercise their their feeling. So well, we romo means rhythm. It is that the silver true music, or in a Japanese we call nanbang nanbang, or means it creates uh, it creates the joy of learning because children learning while play the game. So actually, the Salisbury method uh, is derived from various educational concepts, such as the concept of education from Frederick Froebel, Maria Montessori, Rudolf Steiner, and Emily uh, uh, Jacques Dalcross and Abindranath Tagore. So you can hear in this uh, picture. So. Mm. As you can see in my uh, pre, uh, my slide, so the Kihajar Dewantara combines all of the uh, educational method uh, in Sariswara method. So Sariswara method was inspired by the lesson from Sultan Agung Mataram uh, on Sastra Gending. So Sastra refers to the science or knowledge and Gending refers to Japanese music. So Sastra Gending was given to educate Japanese So uh, the Sariswara method was inspired by the lesson from Sultan Agung Mataram, Sastra Gending. Sastra refers to the science or knowledge and Gending refers to Japanese music. Sastra Gending was given to educate children, Japanese children during the Mataram. Sastra Gending is a tool to pave the way for the human mind. It is true based on the belief that human senses are primary senses, especially the eyes and the ear. The more subtle human senses, the more subtle human. Sastra Gending is proof that arts are valuable in education, and that is how arts should be in the learning curriculum. The learning concept in the Sariswara method is based on three N or tiga N, niteni, observing, niroke, mimicking, and nambahi means adding, adjusting, or innovating. Active, uh, activity that deals with observing or understanding information absorption, absorption. Absorption. Children will observe the information and put them as new knowledge. Niroke is a psychomotor activity that means copying or mimicking. After children observing the new information and then they will copy the information. Namai is the activity to record the new information and every children will produce something new or something new. Sariswara method believes that all humans are born into the world. Uh, carrying the bad and the good habits or method is a way that will reduce bad behavior by using human senses, which combines language, music, and history. It is also a way to help preserve and develop the Indonesian nation culture. In the Sariswara method, the principal learning material is Indonesian nation culture as well as So uh, the study Swara method comes into view because education mostly prioritizes uh, intellectualism and excludes other subjects such as art. However, art subject is considered balanced intellectualism with human feeling. It is the main goal of the art uh, that should be included in the school curriculum. The element in the Sariswara method have the same thing in common with music education learning element. In the Western music education system, such as the Alcross of Kodai Suzuki, music learning aims not to raise a person become a musician, but rather to create individual character based on their culture. And most of the music education method emphasizes the material learning on their origin culture.
And here is a principal basis that I conclude with, uh, that I have a best learning from with the Sariswara and with the other uh, educational, education uh, philosophical, like from Cross. Uh, uh, he said that learning music is safer from the tonality, increasing the intellect and feeling. And from or uh, he said that learning music can make human become human being. And Kodai said, uh, music learning must be given to, uh, to all children that the children can become humankind. And Suzuki also said that learning music can help children to become human beings. And also, this, uh, uh, this, those uh, philosophy classes has the same thing in common with the Sariswara method that Kihajar Dewantara state that music or art learning Okay, that uh, um, this is what I meant. Project state that music or art learning shaping people. The studies what I could consider uh, as a framework to develop music education in Indonesia, uh, based on Indonesian national culture. Although initially. Uh, to educate children in Java, but it can be expanded its meaning for the development of music education in Indonesia. And it is hoped that the concept will build Indonesia children having a resilient, intelligent nature and personality in Indonesia with the intention of advancing the welfare of Indonesian nation. And here is a question. And the Sariswara method is an educational method created by Kiajar Dewantara to educate Indonesian children. And uh, Kiajar Dewantara was inspired to teach uh, the Sariswara, inspired by the teaching of Sultan Agung Matara which require children in Java to use Sastra Gendi in their education. And the Sariswara method is an educational method that combines language, song, and story. And the purpose of this method is to train cognitive affection and psychomotor children to support individuals to become human beings who are beneficial to development and well-being of Indonesia uh, society. And in its learning... Oh. Ms. Ms. And Leo? it's learning in its learning activity, the Saris Yeah. Yeah, Buheni. Yeah. Uh, I think if it possible, please yeah. make it short because the time is running short. Yeah, okay. <laughs> While the last uh, slide. This is my last slide. Okay. And it's learning in its learning activity, the Sariswara method also uses the same activity as in music education method from master music educators such as Dalcross or Fodai and so forth. And the last finding could be a reference for music education in Indonesia in public schools so that the music education included in the learning curriculum and align the position of music education in the other fields. And this is the reference. And thank you very much. And unfortunately, this is not because this is uh, yeah, Buheni, I think this is the uh, this is the end of my presentation today. Thank you very much for your kind attention. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Miss. Uh... Ms. Tiu, Ms. Oriana Tiu, uh, it was a nice presentation, even though we got uh, on and off uh, internet connection, but I think uh, we still got uh, the point of uh, your uh, idea about uh, Sariswara. It was a uh, 3N 
niro okay ni tani and nambai i think <laughs> yeah and it will be emphasis material learning in uh, education method uh, all right ladies and gentlemen uh, uh, actually uh, this a uh, uh, the time is uh, short because uh, I, i mean the the time is uh, end but uh, because of we have a couple times of problem with uh, technology and also with the uh, internet connection so if it possible i would like a uh, another 10 minutes maybe just for uh, open the QA session isn't is it okay for the commit, uh, committee I think it's fine all right 10 minutes after uh, after this uh, so please uh, all participants if you have uh, any question or comment from four of uh, material for from uh, for presenter please uh, raise hand raise up your hand or you can also write down your question in the chat room. Uh, please, maybe one of you uh, can deliver your question, your opinion, or I mean your response from uh, for one or maybe more than one presenter, please. Someone, some of you. If no, if if, we, if uh, no one have a question, maybe Miss uh, the team from from uh, Tiasrinas too, Ibu Karinda, maybe you can uh, add more information uh, from your uh, paper with Ibu Tiasrinas too, maybe because uh, because uh, who, Ibu Tiasrinas too mentioned that maybe you will uh, make addition additional information about the Sastra Bulan Purnama at Tembi. Ibu Karinda, are you here? Are you still here? And also I cannot, uh, we do not find anyone uh, write the question in the chat room, in the chat box. Yeah, Ibu Karinda, you are here. Uh, can you give another uh, information? about Sastra Bulan Purnama. About musicalization of poetry in Sastra Bulan Purnama at Rumah Budaya Tembik. Or maybe you can give a, a presentation how they uh, they play, they give the music uh, or musicalization in the and the poetry, I do not know. Maybe you can give more information about that. So, Sastra Bulan Purnama, uh, the format of Sastra Bulan Purnama consists of two forms, uh, reading poetry or short story with music and without music. From two format, there is a two group this research showed that two informants had the tendency to enjoy reading poetry without musical accompaniment, and uh, there is one group had tendency to enjoy musicalization of poetry. So in this study, uh, the pros and cons are explored to find out the option or suggestion offered in the musical so that the musicalization of Uti can be described more optimally. Okay. The problem starts from... Hmm. Appreciation of Uti has grown. At first, various Putri appreciation activities were carried out by reading books and next, uh, to declamation and into musicalization of poetry. From that uh, grown appreciation of uh, poetry, there is a to respond. The informant who tend to enjoy declamation and the informant who tend to enjoy musicalization of poetry. Is that all? Yeah. All right. Uh, 
again ladies and gentlemen all participants do you have any question any response from our from four of our presenter uh, i can remind you that we talk about uh, musicalization of poetry we talk about uh, uh, the healthy food it was uh, the oil sasha oil and also rice rice bean oil and also talking about the uh, uh, meaning of death and also understanding ourselves yourself as uh, during the pandemic situation and the last time we talked about the method sariswara method niroke niteni niroke then nambai uh, so maybe it will be inspiring you to send uh, to oh yes we have we have uh, one question to Ibu uh, Theo. It is a very interesting topic. Do you think that this kind of practice can be applied in any schools, especially elementary schools in the Indonesia today? As we can see that the uh, fanatic religion has, oh, sorry. Yeah, as the fanatic religion, where, where is it? Has spread their ideology uh, to the children uh, that school. It's for uh, Orianati, Ibu Orianatio. And then again from um, Pak May Artanto, uh, you have you have uh, delivered the question, write down the question to Ibu Tias. I would like to ask, related to the musicalization of poetry, how is the process of arrangement between the elements of music and poetry to become the musicalization of poetry? And in that context, what form is the musicalization of poetry? If you can take the example with, uh, as done by Ari Reda, with a poem from Sapati Joko Damono, or Tony Prabowo, who made a work from the poetry of Gunawan Muhammad, or that many school students do when reading poetry then combined by music. Yeah, it's, uh, so we have two uh, questions from two presenters. So please, uh, Ibu Oriana Tio first to uh, respond to uh, the first uh, question, please. Okay, thank you, Bu Heni. Um, uh, to Agni uh, Saraswati, yes, is it possible to do this method in the uh, especially for the elementary school because this method conducted in a like uh, in a dolanan anak. So if you, uh, dolanan mean dolanan anak, uh, children with dolanan or children with the game, uh, there are two things that we cannot separate. Yeah, because uh, children tend uh, children very like to uh, uh, to play a game so it is very interesting if you use this method uh, for the elementary school uh, not only in Java not only in Java especially not only in Java but all, all over Indonesia you can use it because in every province in Indonesia like I said before that Indonesia is very rich in the cultural diversity so they ha they have uh, their their own culture Oh, still have a problem with uh, internet connection, but do you? Oh, yeah. Learning material for uh, the elementary student. And also, uh, as uh, and your second question, as we can see, the fanatic religion has spread the, their ideology to the children at school. Yes, uh, but if we, uh, if we, um, uh, if you look back to the uh, to the Kiajar Deontara era, so um, I think that uh, some of the folk song, uh, like say for the example in Japanese, is like spread out with the Wali song. If not, I'm mistaken. Uh, such as of uh, all of the some, most of them, like uh, the 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 song from. Uh, for to educate children in Japanese, such um, it's like uh, spread spread out with the uh, from the Wali Songo. So I think this is uh, 
you can use it not to uh, apa, is, uh, not only used for uh, children um, in um, for one religion religion also uh, only, but you can use it to educate for uh, children uh, with the religion that is uh, uh, claim for the in, in uh, that is uh, people in Indonesia uh, believe to. So I think this is very um, very compatible with this uh, with this issue. Yes, that's all. Yeah, so, so in uh, in one word, so uh, the method of Saliswara is a kind of uh, flexible as a uh, learning method, right? You can say like that. Yeah. 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 That's the point. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Tiu. And uh, Ibu Tiasinesu, please uh, give a response from uh, for uh, for the second uh, participant. Ibu, who is the who is the first? Hey, Artanto. Artanto, yeah, Pame Artanto, yeah. So, uh, thank you for your interesting question uh, for Pame Artanto, like you asked. So, uh, the format of the Sastra Bulan Purnama consists of two forms of performance: uh, reading poetry or short story with and without musical accompaniment. So, uh, the music has done. So uh, the performance, reading poetry or short stories with musical or not uh, musical accompaniment. The musicalization of poetry can be used uh, as a medium for introducing poetry. Then musicalization of poetry can be used as a medium to introduce literature. So one of the informant re revealed that at first uh, with, uh, they had never read poetry collection or books, but then he, she liked and used uh, the musicalization of poetry as an excuse to come again to the Sastra Bulan Purnama. So uh, the format of the Sastra Bulan Purnama consists of two performance, two forms of performance reading poetry or short stories with and without musical. So uh, just uh, musical has uh, just uh, done the poetry with music or poetry with uh, not uh, music. Just, uh, just a simple in Sastra Bulan Purnama. So if you ask her how about the arrangement between the elements of music and poetry to become the musicalization of poetry. Um, uh, with the case of Ari Reda or Tony Prabowo or Saparti Joko Domo, uh, Damono, it's a different case in this uh, Sastra Bulat Purnama. So uh, who, uh, the first uh, poetry and the second mus music, or it's not about that in Sastra Bulan Purnama. The format of the Sastra Bulan Purnama consists of uh, stories with and without musical accompaniment. So music just uh, accompaniment with that sound or not that sound music. Uh, I think it's in uh, that sound. Thank you, Bu Henny. And yeah. thank you, Bu uh, Pak Tatame Artanto. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, so I hope uh, Pak May Artanto not really uh, trust with the, with the, what the Bu or Bu Tias uh, explained. So it may uh, what I think is please someday come to the uh, the event Sastra Bulan Purnaya Purnama yeah. and you can see by yourself how it uh, look like the uh, the performance. Yeah, so it was yeah. right uh, with the composition or the arrangement. So uh, Pak May Artanto can see exactly no understanding when when uh, visit uh, Sastra Bulan Purnama someday, maybe. All right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I think uh, some of you still have a question or maybe your question still in your mind. But since uh, the time now is running short, even uh, actually we uh, ask more time uh, because of the difficulties of technology and also internet uh, connection. So finally, 
uh, we come to the last session of the parallel uh, session, parallel uh, session of uh, ICPA, the fourth. Uh, thank you very much for all presenters and also all participants about uh, your participation and also your uh, attention. Uh, please keep healthy, keep uh, happy, and hopefully uh, next year we can again meeting meet in the uh, next ICPA uh, uh, event. Thank you very much, and time and also the floor will be coming to the Miss Hanning. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ibu Henny, for managing the parallel session in a very patient way. <laughs> Dear participants, uh, we are halfway through, and I think it is wise uh, to give you an opportunity to recharge your energy. So please have a more or less 45 minutes break, and I will see you again in the second session of the keynote presentation. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>